gentlemen, welcome to another fantastic episode of your show. That's right. It's the Kickout Crew. Uh, want to thank everybody for the positive feedback last week. Want to thank the guys for uh, you know, starting the show without me. Want to thank Adam for taking charge and Brad taking charge. Everybody uh stepping in when uh I decided to step out. I guess so. I uh, really appreciate that, guys. Good uh, good job. And uh, sorry about that again. Uh. Uh, I do want to start with, hey, if you like what we're doing, be a friend and tell a friend because, you know, it's your show. We do it for fun, you know, to entertain the masses. And uh, more masses, more better. Better uh, content. We'll see. <laughs> but well, well, no. well, wait, wait a minute. You, you said tell a friend. It, you, it didn't even got to be a friend. Just tell somebody. It didn't got to be a friend. It can be somebody you don't even like. Just tell them. Yeah. That's actually a good. Uh, tell everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Spread the yeah, word. You know? If you like them or not, friend, no friend, just tell them. <laughs> hey, fuck you. By the way, you should listen to the Kickout Crew podcast. Uh, this is my money. Oh, yeah. I love it. <laughs> but uh, I want to, you know, thank everybody for the feedback. Uh, you know, got a bunch of questions last week and everything, and uh, so I really, uh, really dig it. Glad you guys enjoy uh, what we're doing because we enjoy doing it for sure. Um, be sure to follow us on all of uh, your social media platforms. Kickout Crew. And uh, watch videos exclusively on Premier Streaming Network. That being Dot said, com. Boom. <laughs> that being said, I think I've rambled enough because we got a lot of shit to talk about today. So uh, I guess time to kick it on over to Brad. So Brad, what you got this week? No rants this week. Just going to talk about a few things. It uh, said for- Rand Stanton. I know, I know. I break that before I even know what it is. <laughs> so uh, I want to talk a little football, not about the Eagles, because why would I want to do that? But... uh Jamie Gillen, punter for the uh, for the New York Giants, he uh, he is the punter, and he kicked a field goal this weekend. And then they said he is the Scottish Hammer. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, is he a kicker or is he a porn star? Hey, <laughs> also shout out to the Tennessee Titans for their throwback jerseys last week, wearing the Houston Oiler jerseys. Now, listen, we've seen throwback uniforms for all these uh, teams before, but to actually be the team that you took over it was and play the houston texans at the same time was something i just could not get past and i talked about it the entire game so anyway epic, shout out epic troll job for sure seriously now um brian i think we you got have... devin what devin has something real quick something? just on the topic of football i want to give a shout out and congratulations to dolphins punter jake bailey and his fiance bailey nicole on getting engaged when they get married, her name's going to be Bailey Bailey. Yeah. Right. Mile away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brian, go ahead and put up a, you know, which pitch, you know what order to go in with these pictures, I hope, right? So go ahead and put up the first picture. Okay, nice. Uh, so this weekend, we had our annual uh, cookie weekend at our friend's house. I go over, I watch football, and I put together a gingerbread house. This is not one of them. All right. This is the first gingerbread house. Okay. This is one that someone else did. Go in with the second picture, uh, Bryant. Did you try to put that in a bag and take it home with you? Well, look at this. Another beautiful gingerbread house. So this is the second gingerbread house that I picked. Now, all the gingerbread houses look very good, except for, go ahead, Bryant. This is my gingerbread house. Atta boy. (laughs) It's like mine. (laughs) You look up beside a fire? I just can't understand. There there are some things I am so bad in in life, and this is one of them. Um, So now I realize, like, after I realized what I was doing with these windows, right, Uh, I everything's dripping down. Now I know I probably should have worked on this horizontally, not vertically. You know, (laughs) I actually paid someone five dollars to put the thing together anyway, to glue the thing together to begin with. And then I I, so everything's dripping down. So I thought it was a good idea to add as much frosting as I could to these windows and just put gummy bears in them. Gummy bears were not part of the kit they're just something i found in the house and put a put it on there i just wanted to show everybody how uh i can i am the probably the least talented person in the world this was by far the worst gingerbread house but if you see in the cup next to it someone did vote for me oh was that Um, you (laughs) i got three votes uh total i think one was from lotus one was from deb and one was from me so thanks to my family for supporting me no matter how terrible i am so just show one that last picture go ahead bryant this God, is what damn. two days, two days of my wife and her two friends. This is we divide this by three. I, I what are we doing with all these cookies in the house? I there are what how many cookies do you think are here? I have 
800 cookies in the house. We have five of us in here and no one's even eating them. So I'm bringing them. How how many people were there, dude? That's like. Three, three people did that. I mean, like how many people were over? Like how, what Uh, was the attendance in the match link? (laughs) So let's go with that, James. This is an exclusive event. Okay. Not everybody gets to come. This is not a party. This is a get together (laughs) of three families. Okay. Three families get together. The wives make the cookies. The guys just basically sit on the couch and watch football while this is going on. And then we are forced to make those gingerbread houses, which we put off for a day and a half. And that was funny. The first, uh, the first day we, we, you know, we decided we didn't want to do it that day. We're going to do it the next day. And his wife says, well, then you're not going to qualify for the target gift card. <laughs> Guess what? I'm not going to win anyway. So I'm good <laughs> with that. And I was hoping the next day that it would be forgotten, but it wasn't. And he looked at me because, you know, I got to live here, right? like fine let's do this so anyway um so so wait would you say like 15 people give or take yeah so does everybody eat like a plate and a half of cookies anything (laughs) no one's eating anything okay we're taking them home we're dividing them up like me you might have a couple cookies we're just dividing them up and taking them home and then they just sit in my house until easter brought your own bag too didn't you (laughs) so dm the kickout crew on x and brad will send you a box of cookies (laughs) yeah I, I want to say a line. Um, so uh, my wife's friend, Jen, who, who hosted this event, said this on Facebook. When life gets a little turbulent, it's amazing to know we have friends to lift us up and carry us, carry the weight. Boy, that sounds awful familiar, doesn't it? When life gets you down, what? You take out <laughs> it too. Uh, so I want everybody to know that friends are very important in our lives. And it is nice that my wife and uh, has these two friends that they do something really nice together. And it's nice that they were able to cheer her up and even if though things are tough. And I want everybody to know out there, if you're listening to the show, whether you have a lot of friends or, or a few friends, the Kickout Crew is your friend, and that is what we are here for. So um, always remember, when life gets you down, turn us on, forget your troubles. I'm going to tell you right now, I forget my troubles here. I do. Yeah. I, I, have a, I, have a heavy, I have a heavy job, and I have a, I, family problems like everybody else. When I get on this show, I forget it all, and I hope that we do the same for you. So uh, that's all I got this week. And just keep positive, and uh, back to you, James. Hell yeah. A uh, great message because uh, that's kind of kind of our uh, our you know motto or whatever you could say. We uh yeah keep it uh you know lively, keep it chill, and hey man, if you need a friend, you got five of them, six of them with Bryant, you know you got it right here. So uh, I love it. Uh, you know what else is uh, real friendly? Mike's list. So hey, let's uh <laughs> fucking let's get it going because uh rumor has it there's gonna be some surprises. Can't wait. Ooh, I wonder what this is about. <laughs> I don't even remember who's on the list. I don't either. I looked at it once. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're right. So here we go. Ooh, look at that one. So as you can see, our list top five oh, is on Rhea Ripley, <laughs> Ruther, Cody Rose, Dominic Mysterio, and Kristen Cage. Next to come, what? we have. <laughs> Jimmy. Where's Christian Cage at on the uh Oh, did you just read the top five? I thought you were reading the new yeah. ones. Sorry. No, 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 no. I was just giving the top five on there. They can read the other ones if they want to. So new ones, we have Jimmy Uso, Natalia, oh. Hart, Brian Danerson, Tiffany Stratton, MJF, and Adam's pick, Will Ospreay. Can I so, start with can I start with the obvious one here, Mike? Yeah. MJF. I have a tremendous respect for her. I do. Oh, but I don't think her. I don't think she's done enough this year. And I actually think she should be last on the list as Natalia. Ooh. Do you well, guys think that's she... um, not not yeah, just as what I mean, she's accomplished this year? What championships has she won this year? What storylines has she been involved in this year that deserves her to be over anybody on that list? What championships has the Miz won this year? But the Miz is in a segment. He's fighting for the Intercontinental Championship. He's got his own uh, little show. Like I said, he's got Miz TV. I, I I just think Natalia doesn't bring any of that to the table. Yeah, Miz is always there when you need him. When they when they need him, whether it's a heel or face. Natalia's always there. To, yeah, I understand what you're saying, Adam. You're is. right. But she, I don't think she's done a lot this year. I either. just promise. Like, right, right. Yeah, I just hate. I hate to think that she ain't done much this year, man. That sucks. She has. I can't believe we didn't put Jey Uso on here, but we put Jimmy Uso on here. Well, that makes it a little easier. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's no Hangman. So uh, I read it as Jay. I read it as Jay. So are we in agreement on um, 
Natalia or no? I, I guess. I mean, I know it hurts, Adam, but is it true or not? <laughs> I like her. She used to fart on the show. That was fun. When she brought that back, she might bump up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, right. It is of 2023, so let's uh, you know keep that yes. in mind. It's not a lifetime achievement. Um, yeah. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am voting. Um, I'm going to vote. So we, you want to talk about MJF? No, I just vote Natalia number 19. Okay. Okay. I would agree with that. So Oh man, now it's done. Yeah. Laminated, buddy. <laughs> Laminated. Boom. All right. If I can remember correctly, Natalia started out the year as heel, or babyface, I believe, and then turned heel, and then just recently turned babyface. I don't again think you ever know TV what she mind. is. Um. Uh. Yeah, that's a good point, Devin. I don't like yeah. they, they never follow through. And yeah, she I hasn't honestly, done too much. I hate. I don't. I do not like her as a heel. She cannot play a heel to me. Oh. I think she just. She don't have it, like her, especially in her promos. I don't think she has it. She's got great. She's got great wrestling skill. I'll give her yes, that. Yes, she does. And as a baby face, she can do a decent promo. But as and she, heel, they I will, they will throw her in with someone just to have a great match. So she's always good for that, like you said, Adam. All right. Uh, so you, we want to go with uh, Jimmy Uso. Since uh, below Speedball, above Miz. I agree. <laughs> I, mean, I completely well, agree. He, he was the undisputed champion at the end of the year. But I mean, talk about not any getting... main event at WrestleMania. I yeah. agree with I agree with that. I just don't. He, man, I'll tell you what. He's got the he's got the short stick of the two Usos, doesn't he? <laughs> yep. I think he should go above Oscar. Yeah. I was gonna put, I was gonna put him right below Oscar and right before Bron, Bron Breaker. But Oscar like has the championship this year, has she? I, I'm yes. okay. I'm okay with that. I um, Oscar's just now really doing something this year. I won't it's argue with the where you, where you want to put her. The but I mean, I, I'm fine there. That's fine. Are you Ryan fine there? Ross. What do you think, Jay? I'm good with whatever, really. Cool. <laughs> so above Braun right. is where we're going? Yeah. Yeah. I like this. Why didn't we do this from the beginning? We're learning, buddy. We're learning. And <laughs> I actually a lot of like, things that we just, I mean, uh, I, every I, week is like something that fucks up and we just figure it out. <laughs> by the way, as mesmerized as I am by the typing and the, in the, in the deleting, I think we should talk through it because no one's, I don't know how entertaining that is for people at home. That's great. Yeah, it's fun for us. We're like, wow. <laughs> How'd you do it's that, bro? live time. <laughs> so now we got Brian Danielson. Hasn't held the title, so fuck him, right? Put him at the put him at the bottom. Ooh, I um, all right. You guys can agree or disagree. I, I, put, top 10. I, I say top ten. I actually say ten right now. I say above Sami Zayn, below Io Sky. Oh, I'm but he that. hasn't held the title though. Doesn't I matter. honestly Doesn't say above Adam, Adam Cole. Title. What? What does the title have anything to do with it? There's fifteen hundred titles out there. The, the problem oh, is, we, so, so we're so, we're so inconsistent, mine, guys. Mine. Yeah, the no, problem. we talk about one person, it's like, well, they haven't ha won a belt. And then we talk about Brian Danielson, it's like, he needs to be up there. However, well, we I got Strickland, Swerve go, Strickland. Actually, I believe he should go up for the Swerve, that's what I was about to say. Oh, I don't think he should be above Swerve, but if we're going to talk about not having a title, then... I then put him above up. EO, and she has a title. I I, I put him above Zayn and between EO and Zayn. And I'm not even sure about that. But I'll tell you this. We, we talk about no title. We, Swerve has no title. He's had no title. So what about between I Tony? I should go and between Ray Julia Hart and Neo. That works. I can do I can do that. But but Devin hates it, and I don't blame him. <laughs> no, if we're going off performance-wise, then yes. When we were talking titles for the previous person, that made me think strictly titles. I, I'm actually less but, impressed with Uso also, Devin. Um, just... I feel like he really has fallen off, uh, Jimmy. Uh, I'm, but, I mean, I know he's still around. I'm just bored with him. Are you? Yeah, but at the, from the beginning of the year, though, this is all year. This ain't. Just I know, now. but but you gotta you gotta also check their momentum, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean they stop and go, stop and go. Yeah, Julia, Ro 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 Julia Roberts, uh, Julia Julia Hart was nothing in uh, January, right? Yeah, and look at her now. That's what She's I mean. We're talking weird. about momentum, is what I'm getting at. Swerve in January, what was he? Yeah, that's true. All right, then so I could honestly go with putting uh, Danielson right above Eosky, 
strictly off the factor that Danielson's been putting on banger after banger, putting over performers all year, working he through pain. O- he did beat yeah, Okada. He's been in every other main event. Yeah. But I'm like I, I don't know if you guys heard me, but he did beat Okada this year when we were in yeah. uh when we were in um Alabama. I'm good with that. All right, fine. Number nine. <laughs> yeah, right there at number nine. Okay. And then, so, um, let's talk through this, okay? I know that yeah. the typing, the typing well, sound. How about that, Brian Daniels? Huh? <laughs> um, so Tiffany Stratton was really hot, and she's still in the NXT picture. I don't think you can put her over any other women's title, or even Becky, because Becky beat her. So I would put her between Becky and Logan. I'm not bad at that. I can do that. I haven't seen a lot of her, but what I have seen of her. She's got, she's, she's got it. She's got it. I think yes, she was. Yes. Put in the, I think she was put in the title picture early because um, Roxanne Perez got hurt, and I don't know if she would have been there without her. But it, she still overperformed. She's the Barbie girl. What do you think, yeah, Devin? Yeah. I think my wife just got home. But <laughs> what are we discussing? Um, I we said uh, putting. Um, Tiffany putting Stratton. Tiffany Stratton in between Becky Lynch and Logan Paul just because Becky beat her. And she has been a champion, and you know she's still early in her career. But I, I don't think she should be above any other women's champion. I agree with that. Uh, Tiffany Stratton's been pretty strong performer all year too. Um, yeah, she's probably the one in NXT that's most ready to come to the main level roster too. So yeah, I'm with you. She's gonna, she's gonna make it as long as she doesn't get hurt, which we we obviously don't want. She's gonna make it after all. Hey, you guys should hear Justin. her on uh, interviews on Busted Open. Uh, they're not sure if she's in character or not. I love it. Bully doesn't know how to handle her. <laughs> and apparently Oscar has been champion this year, so that's my fault. Yeah, but it seems like 100 years ago, right? It's back in May. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. We suck. <laughs> <laughs> you no know, research is our uh, number one thing on this show. I remember it now, and I also remember that it, Again, it was like a transitional thing. Yeah, yeah, she she put her fingers in her eyes with the mist. Yeah, I remember now. It wasn't that long ago. <laughs> I forgot yeah. to look it up. Where are we going with that one? Tiffany Stratton, right? Fourteen. Uh, she'll be fourteen now. Oh, yeah, fourteen. Uh, I like that. Yeah. I like I it. Too. Yeah, I, I like it also. Yeah. It's definitely real good. <laughs> So now that the big one, guys. Now the big two are coming up here. Um, my vote is MJF is one. That's my vote. I agree. I think he's been doing tremendous at everything. He's he switched from a heel to a face and a heartbeat. He's a double I mean, champion. He I think MJF won. Will Osprey three. And, and I totally, I totally agree with that. Working his ass off, and I mean his ring work is great. His promos are great. He's been champion good. the entire year. I say MJF. He was injured, so. Will Ospreay. He? He's uh, still injured. He was. He was. Uh, but I still think he came out and talked. I mean, he's still relevant. He didn't, like, go off TV. I think he's injured now. He has a slight injury right now. Uh, his matches have been fantastic. Yeah, he's he's the only one. one that I can think of currently in a like, actual feud. Yeah, yeah. with the devil. Yeah. I, 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 I Aren't we with. all? <laughs> MJF I one, Rhea Ripley two, Will Ospreay three. I I agree with that. Will Ospreay is he's Will a Ospre- yeah yeah. Only Ospre's because he's just showing out in different promotions is the only reason why I put him in. Because Ospreay's had a good yeah that's what, great matches, yeah. different promotions and everything. Devin, you agree? All right, so let's do it, guys. That was simple. But hey, well, hey guys, why don't you give us something to work work on next time, huh? I mean, yeah. I I had a couple choice words about MJF, but I I, I digress. But you don't think he's, <laughs> he's he's number one in his promotion? Yeah, he's been there for the year. He he hasn't had that many amount of matches, you know. Well, so. wait till, I can't wait till we get to Roman then. Yeah, wait. He's, had, <laughs> he's had three matches this year, right? Or nine? Nine? I don't even think that many. It's probably like four. <laughs> I, I think I'll broke it down on him, something. Like... I mean, MJF did that match on Collision with um. Damn it. <laughs> Granted, I don't really watch much wrestling these days. Uh, that's why I like the in week uh, stuff. Any Omega, the Omega, yeah, the Omega, yeah. the Omega match that was on free TV with MJF was. Yeah, he had a good one with Ethan Page too. So, so and, and then, MJF, go ahead. Next week we're gonna have six more, 
which means we got five of them we can take off the list completely. Mm. And then, of course, as their as their storylines develop, we can always move things around. Remember that, guys. Definitely Dominic Mysterio is no longer a champion. Remember that. Yeah, and, and I mean, you have, champion, have, you have to be a champion <laughs> to be up there. <laughs> but no, I mean, we have. This is Tony. Tony Storm so, may bump up a couple places then. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see. I think next week is going to be our final week, and uh, to our fans, tell us what you think. And if you dis- disagree with us, fuck off. <laughs> no, <laughs> a shout out to a uh, you know X uh, Twitter. Great feedback on the list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love I love the feedback yeah. back and forth, man. Because it, I love how somebody was like, "Oh man, that, that's pretty solid," and the next person. Dude, that's total shit, man. <laughs> yeah. That list is shit. So There's really no criteria. Yeah. No. This is just something that we're going by and just having fun with. So I said this. I just love the involvement. I mean, if they like it or if they give us our their own, that's what I like. Mm-hmm. I like it too. I like I like hearing from Amy that she's mad. She's actually had to turn it off because uh it bothered her so much, our list. <laughs> That, that was the thing somebody. that made her turn off our show. Yeah, I said, wait till <laughs> I, I said, wait, I said, wait till FTR is off, off the list, too. Yeah, shout out to RJ for the video he sent about Brad. That was about hilarious. Not shout out something. RJ, that was funny as fuck. That was great. <laughs> shout out RJ that was good. <laughs> for, for bringing Brad down a notch or two with his bag I, of food. <laughs> haven't had a chance to listen to his show this week. He decided to put it on the same time as our show, so <laughs> thanks, RJ. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, is this, this is another. Uh... <laughs> uh, I actually just to uh, promote it a little bit. He had Crazy Steve on from Impact Wrestling this week. I haven't had a chance to listen to it yet, but I, time this airs, I definitely will. What show Crazy was Steve that, Brad? Is, uh, roughing it up with Brian Hebner and Crazy Steve is legally blind. If you guys didn't know that, that's amazing how he does that. And, and he's, he's a good. damn good, performer. very good character, very good character. So I was, I'm looking forward to listening to that. You know what I'm looking forward to? Today's agenda. So today's agenda is, it's uh, obviously, I hope you guys all had a nice Christmas. <laughs> okay, Fabe, we know it hasn't <laughs> happened yet. We just talked about everything in wrestling from the week of Christmas. So there you have it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I hope everybody had a nice Christmas. By the time this airs, it will happen. So New Year's uh, Eve and New Year's Day is upon us. So we decided to do two New Year's Evil matches to celebrate the new year. So that's today's agenda. Hell yeah, I like it. <clears throat> Sorry, there is a cough button on my microphone. But hey, uh, what better uh, what better way to get this started than with our first match? And what is it? Boy, it's a good one. It is Karrion oh, Cross oh. versus Damian Priest from NXT New Year's Evil. It took place January 6th, 2021 from the Capitol Wrestling Center, or some of us know it as the WWE Performance Center. Shout out to that picture. Looks amazing. <laughs> Shout out to that palm tree. Yeah, that palm tree that was planted there. Like, uh, it almost looks fake. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's, it's, it comes from Orlando, Florida. There's palm trees in there, Orlando. I know. It just doesn't look that <laughs> legit. But anyway. It had it to the building. Uh, what's that? It's like zoomed in the top corner. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You can't even see the doors on that picture. <laughs> nice window. What's going on? That's what's taking a shit in that picture, huh? <laughs> It, uh, it had an attendance of unknown because it was people and monitors. Shout out to the that time of, uh, you know, our history. Moving on. And it had a match length of 15 minutes and 29 seconds. But, uh, Devin, you got uh, some big shoes to fill because Mike, uh, that video's been making the round of Mike's build. So, Devin, how did we get here? Well, unlike Mike, I actually looked mine up instead of just <laughs> going from memory we'll call it that so Karen cross returned two weeks prior from a big sh- shoulder surgery that he had and he attacked damian priest right after damian priest lost his north american title to johnny gargano the next week damian priest said that he won't be a- anybody's bitch and challenged Karen cross to a fight at new year's evil Scarlet brought out the hourglass to ringside. Got out. It was pretty much set up. Tick tock. Tick tock. It's time, baby. Time. Damien Priest entrance. Better hear her now, Mike, wherever you are. 
He's Son of a bitch. It was not time. You got any eight thirty? <laughs> I will say, uh, you know, uh, so I don't know if you put this in your notes or anything, but uh, Scarlet, pretty underrated valet, right? Like she's damn good. She's loud as fuck. She's really vocal. Like you know, she's in, uh, encouraging her man, you know, and all that stuff. And because don't let the looks fool you. Like it's not like she's Miss Elizabeth just out there standing, you know. But she's like. I think she's underrated as a valet. Nobody really talks about her like that. You don't think I'm going to mention Scarlett? Uh, yeah, I'm going to mention. I, I wanted to mention the <laughs> talent-wise, you know. I uh, I want to 100% agree with you there, James, because during this time period that you just you mentioned, kind of scoffed over it. It was during quarantine. Everyone was kind of in our homes. It was the Thunderdome kind of era for WWE, and this time having Scarlett on the outside, she was a great kind of piece to take our entertainment like elsewhere he's yelling slapping the ring she does all kinds of good stuff i like it yeah absolutely she's also very seductive i mean the way she does everything is like she's seducing the camera she is she is really good at what she does and that is not an insult because i know she's going for that <laughs> so it is what it do, is do you guys like this version of scarlet or the smoke show version from impact wrestling i'm gonna go with yes I was about to say, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so a uh, funny story, uh, actually, Damian Priest calls her smoke show one time on this. And that was in reference to that, which I thought was during this feud, actually, because I was watching pretty heavily back then. Cause why? You couldn't go anywhere. So uh, I was watching pretty heavily back then. And um, yeah, he called her smoke show. And I thought that was pretty good callback. This is the COVID era, like we've been saying, Devin. What do you think of the way NXT handles it here with your presentation? I absolutely love it. Um. In a time period when we couldn't have fans in attendance, they brought some fans. Like, Of course, there are hired people, but hired fans in attendance to bring us some extra noise. Like James was talking about with Scarlet and stuff, like they were just another person to try to keep our, like, uh, the viewership, like, favored in one direction. Like, obviously, to cheer Priest here and to boost uh, Cross and Scarlet. James, who are the announcers? I'm glad you asked. The research that I got was completely wrong on this. But uh, it pans to Wade Barrett and Vic Joseph, but then Beth Phoenix is also on there, too. This is a great picture. Who looks better in a suit, Devin? Oh, look at Vic Joseph there. With his nice bow tie, he's looking dapper. I love it. Carrying Cross entrance with Scarlet. Uh, incredible look, like we were talking about already. <laughs> There's my first mention, James. Why have they not capitalized on this in the main roster, Adam? Why didn't they just go with this? Great question. Well, to begin with, you know, you got um, Vince McMahon just kind of doing his own thing. So he got the Peru treatment. Let's put a helmet on him and go from there. But even now, even now, this is not completely the same. And so that's the thing. They brought him back to SmackDown and they did the whole um, the timepiece. They put the hourglass, they brought it to the ring set it down and kind of introduced him with um Roman and then Drew McIntyre as well and they did the thing with Drew McIntyre and it just kind of went sideways from there. And uh, and it's it, it's it's unreal because Kerry and Cross looks legit. Hair or no hair. So I want to ask I'm gonna take it one step further. Uh this was for Mike, but I'm gonna keep it with you Adam since Mike is uh taking a hiatus for now. Why are you I mean not why are you surprised knowing what you not knowing now not knowing what you know now like are you surprised that priest is the bigger star now honestly yeah because this presentation there they they really didn't push priest to a whole lot in nxt like they did Karrion cross because they 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 had Karrion cross beating everybody i mean he was undefeated here yeah. As a matter of fact, he was. Yeah, we're gonna mention that. Yeah, definitely, he, he was beating everybody, man. The presentation was amazing. He's running through pe people, and then move them up, and nothing. First match loss to Jeff Hardy, by the way. Who nothing against Jeff Hardy, great star in the business, but it made no sense. You came bring him up with the he, helmet, like uh, my or like Adam said, it came out. And actually, helmet. and carrying Cross, he was okay with that. But then, where are you going with it? That's all well, he wants and, to know. That's all anybody wants to know. Where are you and going? Like packaging him again, like. Fucking do something. You haven't even worked on the initial two packages that you've had him debut on the main roster, and you're repackaging him again? Like, fucking do something, man. 
So Priest with kicks, now slugging away on Cross. Cross slams Priest down. Cross now in control. James, were you ever part of the Thunderdome? I was not. Did you ever uh, reach out to uh, SmackDown and say, I would really like to do this? Uh, I know that I could be the face of the company. <laughs> well, uh, you know, actually, I did. And they were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You would, you know, they wanted, they didn't want me to, uh, you know, go down. They saw my potential and talent, and they didn't want me to, like, you know, be lower than myself. So I appreciate that question, Brad. But no, I did get an email link one time to be uh, one of the participants. I just never, I didn't capitalize on it. <laughs> uh, as as I did not either. I did it not. Was weird. It was it was it was too broadcast. It was like, all right, guys, let's cheer for whoever it is. Yeah. And, At yeah, least they were trying. And, and you're on a delay, like it's because like <laughs> a big move will happen, and then like three seconds later, you'll see everybody like, <laughs> you know, on, on their monitors. Back to what James said about commentators. Beth Phoenix was at home doing commentary. So can you imagine doing commentating when she's at home and the other guys are live and having to kind of work all that in together without missing a beat? I mean, they did a damn good job with this, with her being home. And on a delay and everything. Because NFL yeah. games, uh, a lot of the NFL games during this time were on a, uh, you know, the uh, broadcasters did it from a studio while the game was going on, like wherever. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, you know, I'm kind of like the voiceovers that they do sometimes with these matches. It always, it's kind of like that too. They just have to but figure it out. But it's a live like voiceover that. though. It's not like yeah, in post. Like it's, it's just and weird. They never step on each other's toes during the matches. I mean, it's amazing how they did it without running all over each other like we do. <laughs> We're all looking at each other. We still can't get it right. <laughs> Cross suplex the priest. Not a cover though for some reason. Cross has never lost on NXT at this point, like we said. Cross throws priest into the steps. Adam, those steps don't hurt, right? I mean, it's just a gimmick, isn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, Always. they hurt about as bad as a Kindle stick. <laughs> Who's the referee, by the way? That looks like AEW Stephon Smith. Does it look like or it is? You know, I ask us every week. Yeah, I, yeah, I just I couldn't figure out who that was, and I was like, wait a minute, he's AEW now. That's why I couldn't find him. Cross has Priest by the hair, Priest with attitude, Priest with the right hand. Mike, he's oh, back. Welcome, <laughs> back. welcome back, welcome back, welcome <laughs> back. Mike, we know you like uh, Alexa Bliss. Yeah, but is, but is Scarlet a very very close second? Yeah, she might be third. Who's second? Because I want to know. Uh, Triple H. <laughs> How much have you been drinking? <laughs> um, I don't know. I just yeah. think, I don't know. There's something about her, but I mean, she's. Something about her. You should see her in the 2300 arena, the old ECW arena. She stands out like a Barbie doll. Devin, is this too much brawling for you early in the match? Absolutely not. I, uh, I love it when two brutes go in there and just tear each other apart. That's what it was, kind of, at least to me. I love this. It seemed picture, like two though, big though. guys just taking it at each other. Priest just seems really happy that Cross is doing this to him. <laughs> he's like, That's come in. That's picture. <laughs> well, wasn't this where he's like, I'm still standing or whatever? I know he does that like a couple times throughout the match, but I think this is the first one. It's a nice smile for sure. <laughs> Flatliner by Priest, shoulder in the corner by Priest, big clothesline by Priest, broken arrow by Priest, sort of. But then Wade Barrett explaining that this missing move, saying the priest has injured ribs. How'd you like that, James? I uh, I like it because it gave a little. Uh, now, granted, I don't remember paying uh, too much attention, so I don't know the validity of that comment. But I do like the fact that he referenced it that way. It, uh, you know, you're talking over what's happening, and it gives a reason for uh, you know some of these moves. Cross shoulder first in the corner, takedown by Priest, working on Cross's arm and an arm submission. Adam, as an in-ring performer, these guys added extra grunts and verbiage, or do we just hear them because it's the Thunderdome? It's, it's a little bit of both. It's because it's two big guys, and they're probably they're probably not holding nothing back. I mean, if knowing Karrion Cross, he's probably like, hey, you better bring it, or I'm not going to sell it. And I bet Damian Priest is the same way. And plus, the audio, everything's kind of popped in i believe there's a lot of crap popped in here so i think it's a little bit of both Devin, what do you think of the look of the nxt arena at this time i absolutely love it like it's the old classic black and gold nxt mixed with the best thunderdome that you could have at that time so 
I enjoyed it. They're going at each other now. Kicks and springboard by Priest. Mike, does Priest seem a little sloppy here, or is it the hurt rib angle that they're going for? I think it might be the hurt ribs, because, I mean, he's flawless in the ring. Yeah, I agree with that. I I didn't pick it up at first, but, I mean, it really does help with Barrett talking about it, because, you know, we go into this a little bit cold, and, and you know, it, it well, does help. He started, yeah, he started talking about it. It could be, you know, a, a, him, like, pointing out, hey, this is why he's doing it, so... Mm -hmm. It's all part of the storyline. Cross with a huge clothesline. Priest out at two. Cross stomping on Priest. Cross put Priest in a corner upside down. Cross knee into the ribs of Priest. Cross trying to suplex Priest, but Priest blocking it, kicking to Cross. Priest hits a labored razor's edge. Devin, is that look? Is that move like the hardest looking difficult move ever to you? Uh, yeah. You're taking the guy from literally behind your back to tossing them. Uh, it, it just looks like you need great upper body strength. You know what's funny about that is it feels like a move that you can always get out of because it's so labor to do, you know? And I know that uh, Scott Hall, you know, he was the man with it, but it's just, it just takes so long. Cover, um, kick out of two. Priest just couldn't get the quick, get there quick enough to get the cover. James, is the story being told in the ring? I believe so. I mean, you know, uh, I kind of dig what they're doing. Uh, obviously, you know, back to like that rib thing, you know, obviously the ribs are uh, still being attacked. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of good moves. And uh, like we've said before, I know Adam's definitely mentioned this. It feels like they are actually going for the win. They're not just, you know, bullshitting around. So I'm I'm digging it. I like it. Damian Moore kicks, roundhouse to cross, Priest up and over, flips onto cross on the outside, then a spinning heel kick to cross. Adam Priest. So it's funny, Adam. I wrote Adam Priest. And I'm thinking... Who am I asking this to? Because I was thinking. Get out. <laughs> shout out to Adam Priest. Adam, Damian Priest showing you everything he has here, right? Yeah, I mean, it's amazing for a six foot four, six foot five guy hitting the ropes with one leg and jumping over the top. There's not too many guys that size that can do that. South of heaven to cross, cross kick out at two. Cross overhead toss to Priest, power bomb to Priest, kick out by Priest. Kicks on the outside to cross, misses. A third cross puts Priest rib first into the pole, then power slams on the steps from Cross. A Devin Al, right? Yeah, of course. That that looked like it hurt for real. <laughs> for real. The end is near. I'm still standing, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't catch that until uh, the replay, the bitch part. I missed that completely. And it's crazy that I saw that because I've been watching 60 Days In. And I remember the sheriff's is like, that's the one word you do not say without, you know, and that's totally fighting. And then, like, I'm, I'm done watching that, and I go to this match, and that's the one word he says to him. I was like, oh, shit, about to go down. And boom, one, two, three. Got so, out 60 days in. <laughs> so this is where I think I messed up the move for you in the match, uh, Adam. Sato suplex by cross? Saido suplex. Saido. I wrote it wrong. I wrote it reversed. Uh, then he turns the half. Am I good there? I'll let that slide. <laughs> Cover. <laughs> One, two, three. Cross is still undefeated. That was a strong showing by both competitors. Uh, this was Damian Priest's last match in NXT. He left after this. And, you know, Judgment Day. The rest is history for now. And uh, as we record this, I, you know, he still has the money in the bank contract. So we'll see what happens there. Back to you, James. Well, I uh, dig it. Uh, never saw. Well, you got something, Mike? No. Oh, I thought you were about to say something. <laughs> but yeah, I uh, I dug it. Uh, good match. Good insight from other uh, guys here. Uh, you know, what a great way to start it. And hey, you know, this episode may not turn out to be New Year's Evil, huh? Sorry, cheap ass pun. Moving on. <laughs> I guess it's time to. You know, what better way to follow up in-ring action than with our own in-ring performer, Adam. So, uh, Ref Adam, fucking a lot's been going on in wrestling, so uh, catch us all up. Uh, yeah, um, uh, seems like every week it gets longer and longer. That's what she said. <laughs> Hello. Thanks to Blue Chew. Right. <laughs> Boom. So, Promo code KOC. <laughs> 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 That's great. Okay, yeah, put that in, see what happens. Put the word Speaking "cunt" in, see what happens. 
All right, so SmackDown, we had the return of the Tribal Chief. Him and Randy Orton had a good-ass face-off to start the show. And then, out of two hours of wrestling, we had four matches. Yeah, but hold up. All right. Three of them were 20 minutes. Which I don't mind. I'm just saying, you have... The storytelling. You have a half hour of commercials. Yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for that, by the way, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Grace Waller comes out, and Carmelo Hayes from NXT comes out and has a win over him, which was awesome because they had a good feud back in NXT before Grace Waller got called up. Uh, Kevin Owens over Austin Theory, Kabuki Warriors over Zelina Vega and Mia Yim, and then main event Randy Orton over Jimmy Uso. So that's probably the match of the night, Randy Orton. I really enjoy the Carmelo match as well, though. The Carmelo Anthony. Yeah, yeah I was the second. Yeah, I was my second favorite. It was like a one A one B type thing for me. What's wrong, James? Now, Carmelo Hayes winning surprised me. <clears throat> Did it really? Yeah. yeah. We got to talk about the. Oh well, I don't know. I'll let you. Uh... I'll let you get through SmackDown before I uh, go. And then through. the return of AJ Styles. Baby. That's what I'm talking about. Dude, they don't want to the they deal, don't want man. Dude is jacked. Jacked. Yeah, what's the deal? Dude. You get hurt and you come back, you're you're 30 pounds heavier with muscle. <laughs> they said him and Randy Orton did the same diet or whatever, so I gotta figure out what that is. <laughs> it's something we don't feel like doing, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> Man, does it involve them, natural light and pizza? Yeah. <laughs> them stripes get a little bit wider every week. It feels like when I'm in ref, when I'm repping. Yeah, girthy son of a bitch right there, boy. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're stretching them out in the way I want them to. Uh, you gotta get a shirt with more stripes. <laughs> Maybe horizontal instead of vertical. Oh, there you go. We are on it today, boys. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so uh, Rampage, you had the Von Erics, which was kind of weird. Oh, it was cool. But, no, I mean, it was weird putting them with Orange Cassidy. Yeah, they're good friends. I wish, I wish they would have just had their own thing, you know, because I like how they presented them, you know, on a, on Dynamite to set them up for Rampage. It's like, dude, you're in Texas with Von Erics. Give but them some. People, people at home don't know who they are. I'm telling you, until this movie, a lot of people don't know who they are. Yeah, it's because of last Friday. The Iron Claw premiered in all movie theaters everywhere. I saw it Christmas Day. It was fantastic. Couple of I my saw the day it was, friends want to see out. it. I bet it's a good ass movie. I ain't got to see it yet. But uh, they was against Matt Menard, Angela Parker, and Jake Hager. Jake Hager's still looking for that hat he can't find, so that's so why they lost the match. So stupid. Oh. <laughs> Don stupid Callis man, family over a couple of jobbers. Uh, and oh, a over Red Velvet. Do I... Who over Red Velvet? Oh, uh, Anna J. Oh, yeah. Good Shout match. out. <laughs> uh, match of the night, top flight, and action and ready versus Penta, my King Go and Commander. Surprised with the result, too. Yeah, I know. They're pushing top flight and uh, action and ready, man. I think they got a match coming up uh, for the trio titles. I Lucha Bros are no good. joke, you know? Like, that's a good, t- good team. Uh, collision. Claudio over Andrade. I. That surprised me because they were they've been pushing Andrade to the moon. Uh Abaddon over Jasmine Allure or Cassidy What's going Abaddon? on there? Abaddon's getting a push. Shout out huh? Abaddon, man. I like her. I'm glad she's back, man. I love it. I'm I'm interested in her and Julia Hart. I'm interested in what they're gonna do with that. Julia Hart putting over Abaddon, right? But then what happened right after? Julia we Hart got the return of Thunder Rosa. Oh yeah. A la Vera Vera. Bet, bet the people backstage loved that. Well, well, she was, just see she her was announcing that night, right? <laughs> and she's looking better than ever, too. I'm glad to see her back on TV because I was listening to Bust Up on Radio. I didn't realize she's been gone for 500 days, man. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I didn't realize Randy it was that long, man. That's insane. Yeah. She was champion when she left, you know? It's a long time ago. Yeah, she. And I believe she should be put right back in the mix for that. He will be. We'll see how it goes. Let, Let it play, it play out. out, as uh, some would say. <laughs> I think it'll bring Julia Hart up and Abaddon up, putting them with, uh, putting them with her, because you know Thunder Rosa's got that. I name. don't know what Abaddon is though. Like she's like, what? I don't, does she want to be with somebody? True. She's a loner, right? 
Yeah, she's alone right now. I thought she was going to join Julia Hart until she turned and started attacking her. And then, of course, Sky Blue, the, uh, I like to call me it. Uh, she's not Sky Blue. She's Sky Black. That was pretty badass. Wouldn't uh, go with it, though. That's all I'm saying. And I hope they book it right, man, because they could have something good right here. I, yeah. I don't. I don't understand. I, I, I mean, they've been they've been turning her for a while. Then it looked like it wasn't happening. Then it was very sudden. We all know where it's going to end up. Yeah. You know. Um, Morris Cassidy over the bounty hunter Brian Keith. That was a good, um, man. Yeah, Brian Keith is. Uh, I've heard his name. I've never got to see him wrestle, but uh. I heard he's a damn. He's been doing it for a while. He's a damn good worker. He came out to still tipping too. Cool song. I mean, that's awesome. I love that song. In Texas. Uh, Willow Knight, Gail, Chris Statlander over Diamante Mercedes Martinez, Brian Cage with a warm up match, Shady Kingston over Daniel Garcia, and Brian Danielson over Brody King. Uh, good match. Yeah, um, that's my match of the night. That and Andrade. Uh, uh, Claudio. Big, I like Brody King. So it will have happened by the time that our that this episode is released, but I'm really excited for Claudio versus Danielson. I think that's gonna be a good match. Two it was a good match them. too. Yeah. Uh, we also had a Ring of Honor final battle. Um, I had a long weekend, so unfortunately I didn't get a chance to watch it, but I've heard good things. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> this weekend wrestling. Besides that. <laughs> I mean, I've I've heard it was all right. I mean, not. I heard it was maybe like a one match show. Guy at the gym told me it was awesome. I actually did watch the uh, Vikingo match, and it was really good. This Rouge or the whatever the uh, Buffalo fuck. I don't I don't know his name. Black Black Rouge. Rouge. Yeah, that dude eats something. Yeah, he's Shout good. He the was at the Ring Blair's last match thing. It was good. He was good. I'd like me some Buffalo burgers. <laughs> the hell, go Bills. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out RJ and Antonio and whoever. Congratulations. Antonio, my son. I miss you, buddy. Uh, Money Not Raw, we had our truth over JD McDonough. It was probably one of the best things of the night. Our truth coming out, and he's like, I think losers should leave the, the judgment day. I lost it. Our, I'm so glad to see our truth back on my team. Damien is laughing. Damien Priest is laughing. I had a non wrestling friend, a non wrestling friend hit me up on Snapchat on a video. So, what do you think about our truth joining the Judgment Day? And I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> like, well, hey, it's it's transcending, you know. I love, I love it. you come out with a shirt and had it taped, and it said, "Our truth." Our truth. The week best. before, JD had one that had tape on it, and it said JD underneath. <laughs> so now, our truth had the that, same man. exact it's shirt, cold. but with our truth. Our truth is man. And he, he won. Uh, he did win, yes. which was a surprise. <laughs> I like how they did that finish too. They just gotta like fall off, you know, and he yeah. pins him. Yeah, you see no the shirt, no, no, the just... <laughs> yeah. So I think that was a good little improv right there, because it looked like he pulled the shirt and was gonna do it with the shirt and it ripped. So I think they recovered pretty good by just kind of pulling him. And it was it was a damn good finish for a crazy match. I mean it was mm. I enjoyed it. Uh, Gunther over the Miz, Chelsea Green and Popper Niven go down to K- Katana G. You know what I thought that match? What? Peyton Carter. Gunther versus Miz? That was a hell of a match, too. Gunther, yeah. Yeah, we're getting there. No, he's, he, he's there. Yeah, I said Gunther over the Miz. That's probably the match of the night. So, uh, really shout out to my uh, WrestleMania predictions of uh, that match happening at WrestleMania with the Tag Team Championship for the women. That's what I predicted, and it happened before it, uh, our episode aired. Awesome. I like Hayden Carter. He's uh... a... <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm I had to I'm... alter... Oh, yeah, I'm a big Hayden Carter fan. I had to alter my predictions of WrestleMania because of an injury and because of that tag match. So, uh, back to what Mike said. Uh, did anybody think uh, Miz had a chance at some point in that match? Because I did. I did. I mean, there was. They made the me believe. I mean, they made me believe. There was a couple of finishers, you know. That's just how I good mean, the Miz is, man. He just skull crushing finale off the top, off the turnbuckle, off the top. See, and, and you couldn't even be mad at it. Like, even if Gunther did lose right now, because that can right there be put him in a title picture. 
Yeah, that was good. Very, very good. That would have boosted him in our list a whole lot further, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. that was boy, I'll tell you. Shout out to doing a week ahead of time, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then we went Alvar over Tazawa, Jay Uso over Louis Kaiser, Judgment Day over the Creed Brothers, which was actually a pretty good match. Yeah, Mike. They're showing out, man. <laughs> Yeah. I got like moving Nile. forward every time they mention the Green Brothers. We're gonna be like, "Yeah, Mike." And uh, Ivy Nile and uh, Rhea. I'm I'm just not a fan. Not no. yet. Not I'm yet. I'm interested in that match, Brad. Yeah, I'm interested too. Ivy Nile is shredded. Yeah, she was on. <laughs> she may be uh, five foot, but she is. Man, she is. She, yeah, she was she, on that show with The Rock that was on NBC or whatever. Very strong. It, but, but I like her. I do like her. Shout out to her being in the group known as the Creed Brothers. Well, was Dab in mind for a while. Yeah. Good Devin. <laughs> Devin, I yeah. see what you did. Or some <laughs> shit. Uh, NXT, Pally Henley over Tiffany Stratton. Uh, Lexus King over Dion Linux. That was a breakout tournament match. Keanu James, the Easy Dane. Um, shout out, Keanu James. Uh, over Thea Hale, Jason Jane was a damn good match. Yeah, but let me jump in on that real quick because I, you know, I'm an NXT guy, and I just don't know what they're doing with the Chase U ladies right now because you had heels versus heels in that, or are Chase U heels? And not just that, Thea Hale is is changing her character into this heelish type character, right? But yet when she's in the ring, she has that intensity that she had when she was like the Chase U cheerleader. So I, I, I need to, I, I, they need to do more with that Chase U with the lady. I, I'm just confused, especially when you're putting them up against heels. But anyway, yeah, Jesse Jane come in as the heel anyway. Jesse Jane was supposed to be corrupting Thea yeah, Hale. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's what that's the story, right? But it's still happening. It's like, well, it's like, we need to it's pay like off. Cheerleader, but wearing leather now. Now they're losing. Like, I don't know. I agree. Because in Keanu James, I mean, I I know Easy Dame just came back, but I mean, it's weird just letting them win all it, it was weird. It was weird. Uh, Tavian Heights over. Luca, what is that mean? What is that? Crucible? I, don't know, I can't see her. I can't see the paper. <laughs> Breakout oh, tournament. Look at this. Look at this. In ring oh. performer. No, it's one of the new guys for the uh, breakout tournament. So I've never seen this guy before. Luca Doncic. He used to be the power forward for the Nuggets. There it's it is. Why do you place for the Mavs, bro? Dallas. Luca <laughs> Cucavino. There you go. I was thinking of Nikolai Joshi. Was he the one that came out in the suit? Mix up the joke. I think so, yeah. yeah. I think so. You mixed I, yeah, up the we're joke wrong, boy. Someone's going to let me know. Uh, <laughs> Dragon Lee over Charlie Dempsey and Joe Coffey. Good match. That was a North um, American title match. Good match. Like, that's that match of the night that I don't feel has a ton of story, but it's just good, good wrestling. Dragon Lee just comes out and shows out any, yeah. every time he's, he's in the ring. And Charlie Dempsey, which is, you know, the son of uh, William Regal. Yeah, just hard hitting, hard hitting, good, good wrestling. Uh, Nikita Lyon finally back in the ring against Taylor Paxley. No problem. Over Hank and Hank. Wait, let's talk about uh, for uh, come on, she did a split. She's an amazing athlete. <laughs> in a hell of an Instagram follow, I'll say that. I mean, look, we I all know, that, you know, she's a rehab on Instagram. As she says, she's a whole lot of woman, but she's, I mean, that's, the athleticism is incredible. Yeah, she does the spin kicks and shit too, you know, like the like karate kicks and stuff. Oh yeah, I she's a it. legit badass. Like on her Insta, you know, she's in there sparring and stuff and like with trainers and all that. Like she's a she's a real deal. I think she's gonna be big time. I think she's gonna be NXT champion. And then on the main gonna... roster, she's definitely gonna be on the main roster and probably a champ on the main roster. The, cr the crowd is behind paid, her. Game. You know, like oh yeah. I think Tiffany Stratton gets moved up pretty soon, and that's when uh Nikita Lines will have her shot. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and then Ridge Holland coming in over a non-title match with Dragunov. But Dragunov still, I mean, it was no contest. So it was weird in it and no contest. I, I, oh, wait, wait, wait. They played on the angle of Big E. Big e. It's fucking, yeah. it was too yeah. much. Big E legitimately broke his neck. And Ridge Holland was unfortunately the one that did the move. I mean, no one's blaming Ridge like Big E isn't. But it happened. And now you're playing on that angle? No. I, I, first off, I thought it was real. I thought it was real till I read it. it wasn't. It looked real, and Ridge is I, in the corner, upset, which you're blowing kayfabe now at this point also because he's upset that he hurt somebody. A uh, heel should not be upset that he hurt somebody in the ring in a wrestling match. So there, I didn't like it. I, I looked at, listen, they, they try things in wrestling. I get it. 
They tried it. As far as I'm concerned, that's bullshit. Big yeah. E broke his neck. He's not back. See, I didn't even watch NXT. I just seen it on Twitter, and I thought it was real. And then yeah, I realized I thought it was real. Then I was the same way. I was like, "Oh, that's fucked up." Yeah, like, I hate I'm when like, they uh, like, you know, you can do stretcher jobs and stuff. That's cool, whatever. But if you're like that. threading the line, like, "Oh, he really did injure him," like, you save it. Like, it's Prince with the heart attack shit. You know, save it. Like, it's beyond that for me because it was Ridge Holland that right. it happened. He did it. Like, no. I just think it's, dumb. it's dumb to legitimize a fake injury. I think that's just a poor way of booking it. What if it wasn't a neck injury that they played off on? Would that have been a different? It was just so uncomfortable. I, listen, I may be, but it was just so uncomfortable for me, especially when I found out it wasn't. Real. I was like, oh, come on. Yeah. 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 It could have been like a knee injury or something like that. I don't think it would have been. Yeah, that's they were, really they're cool. playing on the Big E thing. They're actually doing it. They're making the Big E thing an angle. What? Do you no. think maybe, I mean, if Big E was back and healthy, it'd be different. It wait, doesn't matter wait, if they're if they're pushing towards him returning. Then that, that's I can what understand it a little right, bit. Maybe I'll let it play out. That's what I was going to say. Do you think maybe I, just don't, I don't return? see why they return him to NXT though? Why bring him back to NXT? Oh, why not? Maybe Whatever. Just, maybe, ran over for me. Yes, but maybe maybe I mean maybe this is something for for him to come back. Now, if that's the case, I think that can kind of let it pass by some. Then everybody's gonna laugh at me. <laughs> <laughs> do that anyways. Shout out Nikita Lyons. <laughs> All right. Uh, I do love NXT, my... though. I do. Go ahead. But go ahead. Dynamite Star Strickland over Roosh. Good match. And look who finally got a win. More Briscoe, baby. But oh, guess who kept losing? Yeah. Jay Lethal. I, I had to say it. One of them had to lose. One of them had to win, right? It sucks because it was over Jay Lethal. Social media was favorite. pretty active. Like, hey, both of these guys have not won anything in this Continental Classic deal. Why are they like still doing this? Why are they for pride? Yeah, I think it's what they said for pride. It is. It's just they're gonna keep it going. Yeah, that's it though for them, right? That's it. That's yeah, okay. until they tag together. Yeah. And then uh, Reho over Soraya. How surprised right. is that? Well, I'm not. I'm not a fan. I. I. I mean, I just. I. I can't get into the character of Rio. I can't. But can we talk about uh, who was doing the commentary in that? Tony Storm called. Felt as the duplex assassin, and that he's was hilarious. Something like that. Oh, it was the so greatest hilarious. landlord of all time. I freaking love it. Oh, I've, I've been waiting. I've been waiting for that. By the way, I love Tony Storm. <laughs> the duplex assassin. She's awesome. Tony Storm might be moving up my list. <laughs> I want to give a shout out to that match though, because I was completely surprised. I totally thought they were going the way of Soraya versus Tony Storm, the yeah, two people who be used to be in a faction too. together. Me, I was shocked. I was shocked she lost. Me too. Yeah. Well done, AW. You shocked and another me. shocker, Jay Wild over John Moxley. Excellent. Thank you. I, I like John Moxley, but enough's enough. Yeah, really. He I doesn't mean, need he's this tournament. In this damn tournament man. He yeah. might still win it. He'll probably uh, be the loser in the final, I would assume. Whatever. He probably won't get pinned. He doesn't when need they showed the option of a triple threat match, I knew that's the way they were going. I was not surprised yeah. by it. No, I know. Winning. But it, but it's good good for Jay White. And it's a big win for Jay White. Commander. He needed a win. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in who they're going to put over the top at this tournament because, I mean, Moxley don't need it. Brian Daniels don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see Swerve or Andrade win it. One or the other. Over the top. The sweet Sylvester Stallone movie. Yeah. I love it when he's in the truck and he's doing the, the arm uh, <laughs> reps. Like, <laughs> I don't know if it's a good movie, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's got to be Swerve, right? Like, I, I think so. So. By Maybe the time this airs, we're going to know. Right? Oh, no, we yeah, won't. Yeah, we're going to look like jackasses by the time this airs. It's yeah, the it's 30th, so we won't. It won't. Right, yeah, I dude. think it's Swerve over Danielson. It's got to be. Swerve, they're trying to push. It's Danielson's tournament. Well, who did, who did Danielson lose to, though? Damn, what about Mox? Did Danielson lose to Swerve? I can't remember. They're in different brackets. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. That's right. Gold Brody. blue. Brody? I forgot that. I don't remember. Jeez. Was man, it I Eddie Kingston? Wrestling, then, I watch, uh, then I watch my kids, you know? Oh, he yeah. just beat Brody this past Saturday, little man. Glorophil, Glorophil, who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> can, can Claudio still be in it? And the NWA is he out? Yeah. I Let's edit this. I don't know. I, I, I think it's Claudio versus 
Danielson, winner goes to the semis. Andrade beat Brian Danielson. We sound like a bunch of Bischoffs here, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what I was asking is, is, you mentioned a triple threat, if it could be Claudio versus Moxley versus Brian. No. Well, Moxley's in a separate. Okay. Uh, he's in the different. I do forget about that bracket thing until they show the colors. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> this whole tournament's been confusing. I know, but I like it. I like I like that they tried something. It's going to be you. Moxley, um, Swerve Strickland, and Jay White. In the, uh, they're going to have the triple threat more than okay. likely. Yeah. And it's probably going to – I know Claudio, Brent, and Brian Danielson. And I think uh, – I think I think somebody else is left. I can't remember who it is. The second place. I think Eddie Kingston is still alive in it. Yeah, he is. So it's going to be interesting to see how they do that because he's it's not over because of those championships. You know what I mean? He. I hate know. that. I hate that he put his titles up for grabs. Yeah, well, he Brody did King it. is all. Brody King is also still in it. Uh, yes. Because yeah, it's Andrade, yeah, Andrade yeah. and Brian have nine, and then Brody, Eddie, and Claudio all are tied at six. Do you think Bryant sits back there watching us just boiling and then freaking blows and says, I got to get on here? You know he is. <laughs> you know he like, is these fucking idiots. <laughs> He's a calm guy, but I know he says enough's enough. I need to set these fuckers straight. <laughs> hey, we told him when, <laughs> when we're blatantly wrong, jump in, you know. Brian, yeah. did you know who beat? Did you know who beat Brian Danielson before I said it? Yes. Of course he did. <laughs> of course he did. Do you know your birthday? <laughs> like, are you no, God, your information no. for wrestling? I know more information for wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> but now here's a damn good, another good week of wrestling. Um, NXT was a little confusing right there at the end, but I don't know. I believe, I believe um, NXT, they're building towards something big, and I'm interested to see what they're going to do with Punk and Seth Rollins. No Punk I mean, or Raw. That was weird. NXT, we're talking about it, right? Even if we didn't like it, we're talking about it. That's all they can ask for. That's it. Room. Uh, I'll be uh, I said to you now, James. Hell yeah. Can't wait to see what the description says on yet another uh, fantastic week in wrestling. <laughs> but uh yeah, man, appreciate it. Good debates and all that stuff. Uh yeah, it's, it's, I like it. That's a good segment. I'm glad uh hey, I missed the Waka Waka Wakas, but this is a good segment too. And the Waka 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 is special. We can bring it back, you know. As a one-off, as I mean, they're the same. They're, they talk. We talk about them. They're the same length. <laughs> Boom. One's a little bit longer than the other. <laughs> but you know what else goes good with wrestling? My goodness, uh, you got to eat while watching this wrestling, right? So, uh, Mike, what we got this week? This week for New Year's, it's a New Year's tradition. We are going to do a black IP soup. I fucking. <laughs> I love the black eyed peas. They're awesome. So, Ooh. my lovely, oh, you know, yeah, I'm, you you're so 2008, and I'm two three. I'm not usually 2008, my man. I said soup, yes, or uh-huh. whatever you call it. You don't have to be soup; it's just what I call it. So, and all it is is very simple. You do black eyed peas, you do some collard greens, some ham hocks. I throw some fat back in there and some stewed tomatoes. Put them on a crock pot, let it cook. I don't really know how to cook it. Because I just go to my mom's house because she cooks it every year. And Fantastic. It. I think you did this and, last year because I remember we went off on Fatback. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, add some homemade cornbread. And, man, that's just perfect. You can also throw it on some rice. I've seen something you can throw it on some rice. So I might try that this year. But I'll do it every year for New Year's because it's a New Year's tradition. Exactly. And that was quick because I forgot. I didn't know my feet was up right now because I did not look at the drive this week. <laughs> We're not following it. Professional so okay. podcast. <laughs> but, well, see, the thing is, I got another phone and I still haven't got that, all that shit loaded up yet. So, yeah, I know. Uh, getting a lot of sweet ass security alerts, <laughs> um, you know, too. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm paying for things. <laughs> <laughs> Or at least I've been close. <laughs> That's yeah. for sure. Well, that was it, huh? That's it, yeah. Hell yeah. Well, uh, what are you going to call it? Black Eyed Peas stuff. With Cornbread. Yeah, yeah. with Cornbread. Shout out. Shout out Cornbread. Great Dave Matthews Band song, by the way, too. There you go. You know what else is great? Devin's topic. So, uh, Devin, 
what do you have for us this week? So this week we have another edition of No Our Crew. Yeah. With this being, I love it. The love final it, episode in 2023. It's all about wrestling in 2023. Mike's doing the wrestlers, so I want to know. First question. What was your guys' feud of the year in all of wrestling? Sami Zayn versus Roman Reigns. Boom. I agree. Fantastic pick. Yeah, because it was at Rumble when he hit him with the chair, right? It was a great feud. It was a great build. It was a, And he lost, but it was a great payoff, really. Yeah. I, I agree. The match in Canada, the, the, how, the, the cheers, the people behind him, the noise when they hit him with the chair at the Rumble. Well, would you say Sammy Bloodline? Because uh, the Saudi show was really badass, too. And then the winning the tag, um, I'll give it to him. You know, winning the Because I'm a crowd reaction guy. Like, if the crowd's yeah. going nuts, I you know, it, it's cool to me. So, uh, Fantastic the story. The crowd was though. going ape shit during WrestleMania on the tag match. The crowd's going yeah. ape shit during the... The Saudi tag. I don't remember who they fought, though, but that was good. It was just so good. Everything. I think that was just so well done. Great pick. Everyone Anybody agreeing else? on that? I, I agree. I can't really remember. Uh, I know uh, <laughs> Hangman and Swerve. Hangman and Swerve has been, like, pretty good. Uh, I know everybody that freaked out about the pick. blood spot, but, I mean, it. obviously you could have done without it. I get that, but, you know, it's good. I like the feud. And I think I'm, it's finally putting a little bit of a people behind legitimacy of Hangman. I'll put it that way. Agreed. I don't know, Roman J. Uso has been pretty good. Also true. Yeah, that one was great as well. That all started with the bloodline. Agreed. It was so, good. Well, never mind. I don't know. Don't forget <laughs> about Becky and Trish Stratus. I, yeah, love the, that... I love the I love the finish of it. I didn't like the build of it. I thought that the match, the the cage match, was tremendous in Pittsburgh. James, you were there. Shout out. Yep. But I thought it was. Remember, we talked about it every week. Where are we going with this? Is it well? Is... The crowd. I will tell you this much: the crowd, because you know we were talking to people like around us and stuff, and everybody was like, "Yeah, it's gonna be you know like this feud sucks, like this feud sucks." Right. But then the match was awesome. So it was awesome. It was it was a tremendous. I love that match. I love that yeah. pay per view. Uh, that pay-per-view i think i said it it was better than some uh i thought it was better than all all in i think it was the same time yeah and that that was the big big burp but i just because you did i had no expectations though that that helps too one more dunk through sheamus fantastic yeah, sheamus and drew that was a good match also you know that three-way <laughs> anytime you want two guys mad at each other sheamus and drew are good too <laughs> right <laughs> i got one more um, and uh, I sure wrote it down because I just lost it. So we'll move on to question number two. That's all right. Been there, buddy. Been there. <laughs> uh, what was your match of the year in 2023? Ooh. So I, I, I referenced it earlier, and everybody's going to look at me like I'm nuts, but I, I really think that MJF versus Kenny Omega was was uh is a mainstream now I, I know we could be talking about impact and we could talk about some indie shows and stuff like that mm -hmm. mainstream wise i thought that was uh the the the, the match I, i'm sticking out in my mind because i couldn't believe some of the stuff that was going on in it. and mjf was not known for his wrestling right but he is he's excellent match of the year for me well you got to think about like that uh jy and will osprey have both uh you know on their own had really good matches this year too i, I was a sucker for that la night and roman match man i really thought it was awesome the way they played it up, and uh, you knew Roman was going to win, but there were a couple times where, like, Ellie and I was like, holy fuck, they may actually do this. I mean, obviously they weren't, but that's what, you know, that's my Roman thing. Like, he puts over the talent he fights. He may not fight a bunch, but he legitimizes them. Logan Where'd Paul, him, him and Logan Paul had a good match. Where'd he learn that from? Brock Lesnar. Right? <laughs> Brock Lesnar sells like a motherfucker, too, and people don't even, did, like, wrestled nine times that. a year, and it, but when he did it, he didn't squash anybody. He made, uh, yeah, he would start squashing, and then there'd be that comeback, and you believe. And it's the same thing with Roman. That is a good match. That was another good feud from this year. Cody versus was uh, the dog collar match. Was that this year? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Fuck around the FTR Briscoes. Oh, yeah, that, that this year? Awesome. No, that last yeah. year. That, that was, was last, last year. December. That was last last year. December. I thought you meant CM Punk MJF. 
Yeah. Uh, you said dog collar, right? Isn't that what that, that was? That was last year too. Wasn't that was, it? was that too. Yeah, it might have been. That was last year. Yes. Oh, there it is. Thanks, there man. it is. Man. <laughs> <Worse than ever. laughs> Brings down the knowledge. Maybe if you're gonna ask questions like this, maybe we need. Well, why uh, are you about last year? <laughs> think about them. Because <laughs> I'm drawing a blank, like off the top of my head, you know. I'm going with MJF, Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson, Iron Man match. That was this year. Yep. I mean, it yeah. seems like a long time ago. That's all. It was in March. Okay, long time ago. Oh, Gunther. Well, wasn't that the three way like at WrestleMania? Yeah. That was a damn good one, too. I got a shout out to right here, right off the top of my head Will Ospreay versus Kenny Omega and Will Ospreay uh, versus uh, Speedball, Speedball Mike, Mike Bailey. Bailey. I knew that was yeah, coming. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I got to watch Those that. Those matches I didn't, I didn't were phenomenal. Want, I didn't shout out to Matt movie. M on the uh, Will Ospreay, the Wrestle Kingdom one, or whatever. Or no, I'm sorry, Forbidden Door. Shout out to Matt M on that one because we were watching it all at Huntsville, you know. And he's like, you're not thinking this is a good match? And I'm like, no, man. And my fucking beer's been out for 20 minutes. <laughs> and then uh, the waitress gives me a beer. And I'm like drinking it. And I'm like, you know, Matt, this ain't a bad match. And he's like, oh, is that what it took? You getting a beer? And I'm like, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> the Wrestle Kingdom match, I think, was the better one. They did the show this. The is putting his head through the table. I just I think about that every time I think of Will Ospreay. I well, I mean, we talked about the feud being Sammy and Roman. What about that match, though? No, it was a good match. Be... Excellent match. So, I, mean, was... so I, I think we kind of we kind of talked about my number three already. But what was everyone's moment of the year? Not a match, it, or it could have been in a match. But what was one moment that stood out? <laughs> I, I'm going back to. I, I'm repeating myself, and I'm going back. I to knew we would. Sammy came out in Canada for the match against Roman. Forget the match. Forget everything. To, for to him coming, that was ridiculous. That was ridiculous. You want to talk about the CM Punk pop? That was beyond that. I'm sorry. That was the biggest pop of the year. The chair shot, you know, on Roman. Big moment. Huge. Huge. Yeah. Sammy coming out in Saudi, though, that's pretty huge, too. You know, if you know, I, you know like, and that uh, is, behind and the that is great because he refused to go for so long because of the situation. And now, look, because he was afraid he's going to get fucking killed. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> but, know, but look but... at how they're treating him. Oh, my yeah. God. They love it. was like a hero. Sammy. Sammy. When he got there. All Sammy all the time. Off of uh, Sammy in the bloodline. Hmm? I what see was where that like? the list. He's, he's, he's so far best viewed, best match. <laughs> <best laughs> right. Moment. But he's out now. It's over. It ended. It, it ended after that match. I like. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Randy Orton coming back. I, I, that's you know, I know it wasn't like it was announced and all that stuff, but that's cool to me. And undermined a little bit by CM Punk. Right after it. Yeah, that's the problem. That's the problem with the Randy Orton thing. CM Punk being fired before a pay per view in Chicago has to be a moment. <laughs> you know. That's true. Because Tony Look, Khan he, went out there and pretty much faced the music, and you know. Took, took one on the shin and pretty much was like, hey, he's done. He's not going to be here. Sorry. You want a refund? There's the ticket office. <laughs> but Vince kind of did. That does take thing. major balls to, you know, do that. Vince, Vince kind of did the same thing with Austin. When Austin left, he came out there and did yeah. a promo. And said, hey, he took his ball and went home. And we're not even talking about all in, you know, 80,000 people. Like, that's a moment, you know. Fantastic moment. See, for me, it takes a lot to get me excited. I mean, we've watched a lot of stuff. We've seen a lot of stuff. Well, Blue Chew, Brad, may uh, help you out. Promo code KOC. What was that, Adam? That's what we've heard. It takes a lot to get you up and excited. But, I mean, a recent moment, I I still go with my Sammy moment, but a recent moment is Trick Williams getting four pins in a minute to win that match. That was a moment where I stood up and cheered. I stood up and cheered. I'm like, yes! That doesn't happen. That does not happen. That was great for Trick. Great moments this year. One of my favorite moments was at Backlash 2023 when Bad Bunny came out and the entire arena was going oh, Puerto Puerto Rico. This year? berserk. Yeah. Was that this year? The Puerto Rico show? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was right after Because that Vegas. was awesome. Zelina Vega, too. Like that LWO, was, yeah. That was that fucking thing. sick. Carlito, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Came back. Oh, that was a good yeah. moment. That event in general, man, that crowd was lit. God, that crowd was good. <clears throat> All right, like well, it. that was great. Thanks for participating, guys. I uh, I love doing these KOC knowing our crew.
So back to you, James. Well, you kind of have to fact, participate. The fact that Vince McMahon sold WWE was a pretty big moment. Huh, that is I, true. Oh, yeah. The merge. Yeah. Forgot the about that. Yeah. yeah. The fact that yeah, everybody talks shit about wrestling and then it's like, oh, you know, it's worth $9 billion. Like, what? <laughs> you know, that kind of cost people for a loop. But I talk mad shit like, hey, make fun of it all you want. $9 well, billion dollar worth? All in happening was a pretty big deal. Yeah. That was just for one company, too. True. Devin's got to yeah. pee. Be right back. Yeah. Shout out. Uh, hope you piss quick because uh, match number two is also a doozy. And uh, what yeah. match is it? Well, let's continue with the same old theme. And this one is Braun Breaker versus Tommaso Champa. Champa, sorry. It is for the NXT Championship. It went down. Uh, the event was NXT 2.0 New Year's Evil because uh, if we all remember that era of NXT, fun stuff. But, so uh, yeah, it took place uh, January 4th, 2022 at the Capitol Wrestling Center, uh, the, uh, the Performance Center in Orlando. See, now, the, what, what was this? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> their picture. Because now there's a palm tree and another tree. But, it, hey, isn't that other tree planted in the memory of somebody? Uh, Shad, whatever, Gaspar. Oh, yeah, or, it could be. Yeah. Could be. Uh, Is that the one? I know they... They planted a tree in his uh, honor. Shout you out to him. Correct, Ultimate James, Dad yes. move, man. Ultimate Dad move. Got mad respect for that. Voice of the gods so that you're correct. But uh, yeah, the uh, PC in Orlando, Florida, it had an attendance of uh, unknown because it was monitors and people again. It had a match length of 15 minutes and 26 seconds, and Meltzer actually rated this one with uh, four stars. This was in front of people. This was in front, in front of people, people yeah. There were what? there were no monitors. Okay, then what's the there. what's the attendance then? Probably about three hundred. No, it's like three hundred <laughs> people, isn't it? No, I don't know. Yeah, it's not really me. Say. Two to three hundred people, probably. The Let's... attendance was two to three hundred people, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Meltzer gave it four stars. Uh, there, look who's back, huh? But Perfect. Devin, <laughs> how did we get there? Well. I'm guessing we're talking about the match because uh, <laughs> <No shit. laughs> according to our outline, it's supposed to be James's topic. But on my outline, so, it says Devin's topic, then it says match two intro. Yeah. This episode 87? Eighty seven. Nope. <laughs> I'm on the wrong outline. Okay. So, no, uh, so everything else was the exact same from last episode. No, he said the outline. He said we were off the outline. <laughs> Now it all makes sense. Ah, this is 88, bro. Drew Pearson's right there. Uh, right there. This is episode 88. You know, Des Bryant, Michael Irvin. <laughs> That's why this is going to shit, because of Michael Irvin. I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's great. I, I can't even see I like that how Devin the... went with it this whole episode. He's like, like, you guys are a bunch it. of idiots. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off the outline. But all right. Halloween Havoc 2021 is uh, where the first match of this feud happened. Tommaso Ciampa would defend his title successfully against Braun Breaker. Two months later, in the War Games match, Braun ba Breaker would get his pin over Tommaso Ciampa, making them even, one and one. So then, Braun Breaker, he truly wanted his title match. He, he felt like he deserved it. He's the one that pinned the champion. So he was giving it here, and this was the rubber match. It was completely commercial free. Braun Breaker entrance, total badass. Uh, Devin, what'd you think of it? Oh. I absolutely loved it. Braun Breaker, he's a he's a beast. He was intense. He was full of like you could just tell immediately he was ready to fight. He was trying to win this title. Adam, did you like the NXT 2.0 setup? No. Why not? No, no. I just wasn't a big fan of 2.0 in general. But don't you think change is a, a must in in uh, in this business? Yeah, I, I appreciate the the attempt to change it, but I just I didn't like this too much. Gotcha, Tommaso Champa, Mike. Can I um can Champa ever be as over on the main roster as he was in NXT? No, I don't think so. I don't think he's he's not getting too much either right now. Like, 
I don't it's know. Part of the DIY, yeah, the DIY right now. Um, did, I agree. did you know though his his first job for WWE was a lawyer? Yeah, I remember seeing that. It doesn't yeah. even look like him, by the way. Right. Oh no, I mean he grew a beard and shaved his head, but. Yeah, it's just it, it was a character. It wasn't he wasn't really an attorney. It was just his character. Right. But he'd become a it, badass too. <laughs> amazing how different he looks. That's I wouldn't even have known. I saw that. I don't know how I saw that, but I did. James, I who are the announcers? Before. James, who are the announcers? We have Vic Joseph and Wade Barrett. I do want to point out the uh, chains on Braun's uh, entrance. You know, we kind of glanced over that, but you know, chains like his uncle. You know, stuff like that. Okay. Very nice. Yeah. I want to point out that on both the matches we covered, Vic Joseph wore this maroon color. Looks very nice. On him. <laughs> You're a big, you have a man crush on Vic Joseph. And, <laughs> and Wade Barrett did not wear like, uh, in the, he didn't wear a tie in either one of these matches. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, thank God very for casual. that. Commentary <laughs> tables in NXT on both of them. Well, people tune in, Brad. <laughs> Hell, we had 30 minutes to talk about someone's pants, if you recall. <laughs> you <laughs> we know. sure did. Champa aggressive early. Then Breaker holds up Champa for about, it feels like an hour, and then throws him down, showing how awesome his power is. These guys have some really good chemistry, Adam. And But, uh, I mean, they haven't wrestled that often. I mean, what do you think? That's a sweet... the, the, the fact that Braun Breaker is only four months in right here and he's already going for the title again is amazing because he debuted in September – of 2021 and he beat la Knight. that was his first match <laughs> yeah and, that's, and then here we are against the champion again hmm. so who's the referee over there that is aja smith great answer very quick indeed huh. I'm very proud of you braun opened the rope Thanks. for tampa to get back in the ring which is an absolute mind game and i like it Suplex by Breaker, shot to the back of Champa, and then again, chops and punches, Champa unloading, clothesline by Breaker, big drop kick by Champa to Breaker. Devin, who are you rooting for? Uh honestly, the crowd here was kind of split, and I was too. Um it was the new face, the guy who they were clearly pushing to be this new face of NXT 2.0 and the heart of NXT black and gold era. So it was really a mixed crowd, and I had mixed feelings going throughout it. I was just enjoying the matchup. Advertisement for next week's show, Sola Sokoa versus BOA. I just think that's fun to look back and see mask. who's still there, who's not, right? Breaker misses big body splash, then a big knee to the jaw of Breaker, then a corkscrew out of the ring onto Breaker by Champa, and he pats himself on the back. I know how you love that, Devin. Ah, oh, it's it's so cocky and arrogant. It's it's great. It's a great taunt. But Mike, I wanted to talk about those three moves that came before that. You had, um, you know, he missed the big body splash, then the big knee to the jaw breaker, then a corkscrew out of the ring. What do you think of that big sequence? What do you think of that sequence there? I thought it was amazing, especially mm-hmm. him jumping over the top rope like that. I mean, it just it all flew together like smoothly. <clears throat> I love this shit. I really do. Champa in control. Crowd is split, just like Devin said. Champa uh, locked on to Breaker, finally drops him. Sudden impact. Short clothesline by Breaker, splash in the corner, then drops Champa on his back hard. James, does Breaker intensity remind you of Brock Lesnar at all? A little bit. And, uh, you know, obviously they have the same type of wrestling background, uh, Greco-Roman style, I would, you know. And uh, obviously the legacy thing. But, yeah, you know, the buff-ass dude, uh, kind of TCOB, taking care of business. Uh, yeah, a little, little Lesnar-esque. Champa kicking Breaker in the corner. Uh, fairy tale ending blocked by Braun. Spinebuster by Breaker. Then a standing moonsault. How athletic is this man, Adam? The fact that you called it a moonsault, I'm impressed with you. So I want to give you your props because you gave me mine. So great job, Ola. And it's amazing because I don't know how many 250-pound men can do that. Just standing there and make it look so good. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, he didn't, he didn't squat down and jump up. He pretty much stood up, like kind of looked at the crowd, and boom. Yeah, like, no running start or no. Yeah, yeah. Running. Amazing, freaking awesome. amazing. Chopped by Champa, pushes Braun out of the ring. Now a knee, and another knee, and then uh, in the. Oh, sorry guys, another knee. Champa's now bleeding though, <clears throat> and we're not sure how that happened. I know exactly how it happened. If you watch. go ahead. 
Yeah, I did watch. I, I could have looked up for a minute, Adam. <laughs> no, it's when he did the moonsault. If you watch Braun Breaker's arm, it comes down and catches the side of uh, Chompa's face. Perfect. And how about the bleeding? Like, the bleeding was perfect because it kind of, like, uh, went, like, around his eyes and stuff. I thought it was, yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was almost like it was set up. It was an accident, but it's almost like it was purposely done. That's an and it wasn't, like, it, wasn't uh, much, right there. it wasn't like a moxley match where there's blood all <laughs> yeah. over. Yeah, it's it's it not was, like leaking down his face and in front of his yeah. eyes. It was just like perfectly circling around. Nice it was cool. Subtle, yeah. like that, you know, you can deal with like from you know time to time because like it that. because it's it, yeah it it's it's not too much exactly. Yeah, it's not too much, and it was an accident. It wasn't meant You're right. Be. It wasn't yeah. It wasn't planned. Right. Spirit, but at least we don't think so. I mean, I mean that'd be pretty impressive. Spear by Breaker, but both men are down. He can't make the cover. Great uh, spear, by the way. Yeah, Great that was spear. out of nowhere, really. <laughs> Look at that Great picture, picture Brian. Right Devin. here on Premier Streaming Network. Dot com. Devin, who's helped who more? Champa to Braun Breaker or Sting to Darby? Ooh. Um, I'm going to say... <laughs> Champa to Breaker, yeah. Uh... These three matches kind of helped put Breaker on the map in NXT. Uh, like we kind of talked about a week or two ago. I can't remember when, but Sting has kind of just helped Darby plateau. Like he hasn't he hasn't climbed too much. He was already a main eventer when he got with him. So yeah, Boom. I'm gonna go with Champa and Breaker. That's I correct. think that's the difference. Darby was already <laughs> Darby was already kind of made. Champa yeah, helped. Call. Good good answer. Slugfest now. Head scissors by Braun. Cover out at two. Head Adam? scissors? What the there it fuck? Is. There it is. <laughs> what the fuck was it? <laughs> it was a damn Frankenstein. They even said it on the commentary. Good job. Champa with a sloppy transition, but it looked believable into a DDT. Kick out Braun. Now, into a single leg crab. Breaker grabs a rope. Champa pulling on the mat. He's loco. Breaks the count. I love the breaking of the count, by the way. Breaker with a power um, back body drop to Champa on the announce table. Would you say that's what that was, Adam, or am I Alabama wrong? Alabama slam. Okay, thank you. Breaker power slam to Champa. Champa grabs the rope. Mike, are you going to start watching NXT, or am I going to have to freaking choke you out? Uh, choke me out, because I'm not going to watch it that much. What is wrong with you? Mike just likes to be choked out. That's just the thing he <laughs> likes. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather be choked out. I ain't got enough time to damn watch it all. That's my thing. I don't, I, don't that. believe, I don't believe that. Your kids go to bed at 8 o'clock. Do you watch Rampage? Sometimes, sometimes not. Don't watch that shit. What's your next thing? <laughs> I will say that announce table spot looked very painful. Yeah, it looked like he got hurt. I mean, that was, that looked rough. Oh, Adam, I, or, uh, Devin, I just read your notes. Holy Alabama Slam. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a great spot. He, it was I wish perfect. I would have read that before I announced what the move was, huh? Ah. Uh, <laughs> All right, so need <laughs> need a breaker, and again, and a third fairy tale ending the breaker into the cover. Kick out at two, James. Did Vic Joseph sell you that that could have been it? I honestly thought it was it. Uh, you know, and uh, shout out to the crowd. Uh, you know, because uh, they did the fight forever chant like probably three or four different times here, and when it was fight forever, and then like ooh, 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 like barking like dogs. Fucking love that little uh, homage to the. To his deity, you know, to the dog faced gremlin. But Absolutely. yeah, it was a, this was a really good. Uh, and when Champa hit that, you know, whatever uh, pedigree ish thing, I was like, well, you know, the fat lady's singing. <laughs> you know? And here we go. Hey, Vic Joseph is very underrated. I think he's really good. He is good. And he looks great, right, Devin? Oh, fantastic on the mic. Fantastic <laughs> to look at. He's, he's the real great. dapper yapper. <laughs> the total package, Vic Joseph. Stop looking at his what? Watch. <laughs> Breaker pushes Champa off the top and a bulldog off the top. Pull down the straps, Breaker. Mm. Mm. Steiner recliner on Champa. He taps. He taps. He taps. A changing of the guard. A nod of approval. What a moment. He's a star. Champa made a star. And that is how stories are told. Passing of the torch right there, ladies and gentlemen. And yeah, and that's during the 2.0 era. Was this his first title win? Yes, it was. Yeah. 
he was only four months in. Uh, you know, I like what uh when they push a guy like he's catching momentum and they push a guy and you know he wins like a, a title. You know, Goldberg, Goldberg. By the way, they are both baby faces here. True, the crowd was pretty split, and I like uh, the well they the were false finishes and they'd always cut back to those one kids and they're like ah you know. Well, they tagged together and stuff too, James. Like it was a lot. Like there was like this. It was like they were against each other, but not like they respected each other. It was good. It was very good for two baby faces. They were, they were, I mean, they have edge. They had edge to them. I don't want to use that word you don't like anymore, uh, James, just so you know. It had a very good Adam Copeland to it, or I mean, edge to it. Oh, you know the word. Um, So, uh, guys, unless you have anything to add, I am ready for the questions. I Well, I got one thing. Do you think this is the year we see Braun Breaker in the Royal Rumble? Yes, I actually picked it last week. Yeah, hundred percent. Think so. On my WrestleMania picks from last week from uh, Mr. Bober, I said that is our entrant. So you think because he, he's, he, he's at the point now in NXT where he's putting over NXT stars? He's not winning the big ones anymore, but he's dominant, and then he loses, just like with Trick Williams, just like with Ilya Dragunov, just like with Carmelo Hayes. He's with all three of them. He's lost. He hasn't That's won. That's true. When I hear y'all talk about <laughs> NXT, y'all really don't mention his name that much. So no, he's yeah. losing, but he's still dominant, and he's still a threat. So would you throw him in at the Royal Rumble, or would you just bring him out the Monday after WrestleMania? I would bring him in the Royal Rumble. I'd have him be dominant for a while and then lose, like like a good shot, a good showing, and then and then you put him on the uh, probably like what final six, final eight, yeah, yeah. taken out by someone like Cody or Punk. You know what? If they really want to push him, they could, they could even put him in the final four. Like, like I mean, listen, they did it with uh with what's her name? Uh, jeez, oh man, she was in the final two that first year that she was from NXT. Dude, Shayna? Bianca Belair? But Bianca, thank you. Oh, Bianca, Bianca yeah. Belair. They pushed her, uh, and she didn't win, but she was there, and then she was dominant. Rhea, Rhea Ripley, I mean, I think she was on the main roster at that time, but hell, she was like number two, you know, with Charlotte, and then mm-hmm. won it the next year. Bianca eliminated like eight people that year, too, I think. Right. And that, that's just one? it. Didn't she come out I, like number one or two at, that year, too? Yeah, she was pretty early. I think she was two. Yeah. I think she was two. Uh, I, I became a fan that day, so... Guys, ready? Let's do it, man. Yeah. Randy Alcari. I've been waiting for this this question from Randy Alcari since I read it. Oh, boy. Who, so I'm gonna read. It's a long. It's a long thing here. Who made the best leap from NXT to the main roster and stayed relevant? We know Damian is hot now, but it's mainly mainly because of the Judgment Day is on a roll. All the ladies that came up are relevant: Becky, Charlotte, Sasha, Bailey. But not many men have been. So is it because of the main roster is stacked, or are they having a tough time getting them over? Kevin Owens. I was saying, on the women's side, you know, they're like my dad said, all the women, you know, Charlotte and all them. But here's one. Burn it down. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, that was my answer. <laughs> that's my answer. Like, you know, Robin obviously, Reigns. you know, debuting with the Shield and that was Roman something. Reigns. But he's been pretty tippy, uh, tippy top too. Seth Rollins was the first yeah. NXT champion, right? Yes, he Seth Rollins is my answer. Well, yeah, uh, Roman was booed out of the building for like four straight years. Seth never really was. By, by the way, like, he was, was booed, but too. he wasn't like booed out of the building. Dean Ambrose too, by the way, was with them. I mean, they were all down there. Yeah, but, and they fizzled him out quicker than Biggie, shit. Biggie Langston was, he was champion. He was champion. Bray yeah, Wyatt they made him like you know that stupidness before he left. Yeah, they, they, Seth, they, Seth they, has they, been consistently like. Yeah, you know, McIntyre went through there for a little bit. So, so let's talk about who fizzled out. I think Shinsuke fizzled at times. I I think he was more over in uh, NXT. Um, yeah. Samoa Joe. And this is strictly on booking, mind you. Like that is a strictly booking thing, you know. Samo- Samoa uh, Joe. Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode. Booking. Uh, Andre. Uh, Andrade. 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 Yeah. He was champion as well. But then, but then you know, I look at some of the champions there now. I don't think Ilya Dragunov. I don't see him on the main roster. I think he'd be better there. Bo Dallas. Bo Dallas. Mm. Another one. Was a uh, fucking uh, Kurt son, uh, Curtis Axel or whatever. Was yeah. he champion? Oh, yeah. I don't know if he was there. I think that was before that maybe, but, or it was around the same time. Maybe it was. Well, I don't was know. he ever champion though? Cause we're talking like, you know, big I don't, NXT. I'm not, I, I can't answer that. I don't he was know. He never an NXT champion though. Okay. Oh, yeah. That, I, wasn't that like the NXT, like the Nexus NXT? Yeah, that was right. But like Daniel yeah. Bryan and all them. Yeah. So Daniel Bryan, uh, Bryan's about to, Bryan's about to jump Bryan. on here. I know Bryan's ready to pounce on this one. Burning up back there. 
But I will say this. I think that the reason that didn't work as well is because you had a different uh, person booking, like we said, on the main roster than you did on the, uh, the, the NXT roster. But now, I mean, I uh, think it could work better now because you have Paul uh, Triple H on both. Karrion Cross? Huh? I still don't understand uh, that. Flatline? Keith, 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 <laughs> yeah. Keith Lee didn't do shit. Dra- Dra- uh, Dijak? It didn't oh, give God, yeah. Keith Lee didn't beat T-bar? Roman, didn't he? What'd you say? Kevin. You mean T Bar? T Bar, yeah. I mean, he's oh, back boy. in NXT now. You know, right, and he's doing well. But yeah, I was about Ali. Uh, I was say, but hey, did y'all see that Ali video that he posted today? His world tour thing. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matt M. What did the KOC gang do on New Year's Eve, 1999, when we counted down to the new year, 2000? Devin, what brand of diapers were you wearing that day? Uh. I I don't know the brand of diapers. I might have been potty trained. I was two. So you know oh, what's you funny? Stealing your huggies. I swear on my life, I do not remember what I did. I think I was at I, my grandparents. I don't know. And I was older than you guys. Like, you know, I was Yeah, I was older. 55, I think, at this time. Your AARP was coming in the mail. I was about twenty uh two. <laughs> I was twenty two, but I uh, I don't remember at all. I think I was I at my remember. grandparents, man. I really can't remember. That's probably a good thing, Brad. I can't tell you. <laughs> I can't tell you. I can't tell you most of your my New Year's Eve's are lackluster. Honestly. I think I was at my mom's mom's uh, parents' house, I think, but I can't remember. Yeah, so I was it... 15, so I'm sure I was at home. You were home watching MTV or something? Yeah. Probably <laughs> watching a Polly Shore movie or something. What's up, Devin? This New Year's Eve, I'm gonna be in Washington, DC watching the 49ers take on the commanders. Awesome. Uh, Amy, I get to I get to go to work at 3 a.m. Probably gonna get pulled <laughs> over on the way to work because I'll be one of the only cars out, and cops will probably think I'm drunk. When in reality, I'm going to work. <laughs> so Amy asked what uh, our New Year's resolutions are, but uh, Ben Jones quickly pointed out that he asked that last week, and so she changed up her question. Uh, what are your New Year's resolution? Oh, no, um, okay, I'm gonna read the same thing. Right? <laughs> <laughs> What are the what are, what are your uh, New Year's traditions? Do you eat certain foods New Year's Day for money and luck, or is that just a Southern thing? Getting drunk at a party is normally the uh, tradition I have. I do uh, not have a tradition at all. I except- mean, that is a Southern thing because you eat like greens for money. You got to yeah. eat some kind of beans for something else, and hey, yeah, black eyed peas, like Mike did for the yeah, black eyed peas. Yeah. yeah, did you not listen to Mike's Meat Minute? Were you not there? I wasn't. No. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, the greens for money, black eyed peas for like luck or something. I think yeah. cornbread's one of them. I can't remember. Yeah, it's something. I'm up for anything on New Year's Eve. I don't have a specific tradition. If I get invited somewhere, I go. If I don't, I stay here. <laughs> uh, I went. I once... know there is. Oh, go ahead. Uh, one time, I went to the city recently with my wife and a couple of friends. We were the oldest people there by far. We did it. We tried it. We'll never do it again. The Uber was forty dollars, and that and that was then. And I'm telling you, it was like three feet that it took us. Like it took us. It was not. It was like the most. I tried to negotiate the Uber. I it, I lost. Apparently, I know there was a there was one show when I was younger that we used to watch, but uh, I'll get to that later. <laughs> it's Anybody the title of uh, you know. Devin, you have any traditions? Uh, growing up, we'd all play seen it at my dad's house, but since I turned twenty one, I've kind of made my own New Year's plans. So let's go ahead and say it. Dick Clark, baby. We used to watch Dick Clark when I was like, uh, you know, probably six to like ten or eleven. You know, whatever that was uh, when he was, uh, you know. You're, you're jumping all over your segment right now. Oh no, I'm not, because I talk about. Uh, I actually wrote down some things that I wanted to make sure I mentioned. So, <laughs> I actually did research on this episode, guys. Well, no, not research. Just wrote reminders. That way, I'm not ad libbing it. But go ahead. So we I'm got a tough one here. A tough one here from Ben. You get a you get to each start your own promotion. What do you name it, and who is your first pick to get it started? This is a tough. I read this one. I was like, "Fuck, this is gonna be good." And it's the Kickout Crew is gonna be the name of the promotion. And Sami Zayn is my first pick, James. A uh, fucking of course. Well, you'll be out of <laughs> business. Talk in about one somebody month. that kicks out at two, right? <laughs> you'll be out of business in one month. <laughs> that is a good question, though. What would you name it? The naming part, because you can pick a wrestler, you know. I know he's kind of older, but I would pick AJ Styles or, uh, yeah, but he's kind of older. 
of ah, fuck. I don't know. Go ahead, Devin. You you got it. So growing up, I had this uh, federation that me, and my brothers, my friends, all of us. It was called BCW, the best championship wrestling. We all had a bunch of made up names and made up characters, and we all wrestled on the trampoline and in the backyard and everything. Um, but we only had one real wrestler in it, and it was Sting. So while he's still got a couple months left in his career, I'm gonna take Sting. I have to say, man, that is a well thought out answer. He was Probably. the only guy that like never we never saw in WWE. So at my in my head growing up, I was like, yeah, we could get Indy Sting to join us. <laughs> Yeah if, we're, yeah, if we're choosing current, you know, it'd probably be MJF for sure. But if it's like a, you know, a fantasy thing, which I kind of guess is how this question is uh, worded, Jericho would be a good pick too. Well, it kind of happened once, didn't it? I mean, didn't, I mean, isn't that uh, Tony? Co I mean, I know it was Cody, but it was Jericho really, right? Yeah. And debut mocks, you know, like right after that. Yeah. You got, you got anybody, Adam? Yeah, mine would be the AWE, the American Wrestling Elite. Oh. And uh, it'd be Randy Orton. <laughs> Big shot. Oh, that's a that's a damn good pick too. And Eddie Guerrero. That's a great pick too. You say Eddie Guerrero? Yes. Uh here we go. <laughs> Legends deal. I, 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 was asking, I, I didn't know. I was asking. Mike was thinking Bill Goldberg, right? Yeah, that's that's exactly. Mike, right. you got one. Squash championship wrestling. <laughs> Not hiring him. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about name. Maybe um, Badass Wrestling Federation. Fuck yeah. <laughs> right. I'll do it. And, um, the BWF. Yeah, BWF. And have uh, Brock Lesnar in there. Um, you know, just a couple of those badass people that, you know, just have uh, Braun Breaker. Throw him in there. That's a good answer. Badass. <laughs> I like it. Whipping ass. That's what it is. Final question of the week comes from Amy Vaughn. So she felt that AEW has been dropping the ball on Wardlow and that Karrion Cross has, should he have stayed on the indies because WWE has done nothing with him? Her question is, how would you book him different or would you? Do you like how WWE is booking him in Scarlet now? Well, we know we've talked about this a little bit. repackaging him for like the third time. I thought he was fired. No, no he's, he's back. Because remember they, they posted a new thing. It's like, it's time. I've been waiting. It's time or some bullshit like that, which is like the third time they've tried to like uh, do little uh, whatever you call it, vignettes, do vignettes and bring them back. Hmm. I, I agree um, they're dropping the ball with them. Sure. I, I don't know why they had, like, I, I don't I don't think they should have changed the thing. So here, here's the thing. You bring it exactly what's working. That's what everybody liked. He was undefeated. It was working. She was working. If it fails, it fails. But why wouldn't you try what was working at least? And he doesn't even have to be undefeated. Like, just bring him in, legitimize him, have him uh, show good matches, do good matches, and all that stuff, and, like, see where it goes. I, I don't right. understand. I think, working. I think that was more of a Vince thing. It oh, might have been, but, it, but, he's, but it's still not yeah. working. He's losing. Uh, right now? Today? If, uh, a couple weeks ago, he lost. I, I mean, lost I, I don't like know. Four minutes. Yeah. yeah to Bobby yeah. Lashley. You're right. And I mean, nothing wrong with Bobby Lashley, but why are you putting, why isn't he squashing some people when building him? I don't know. I think Karrion Cross should have stayed on the Indies and we would have seen him in Chicago at Wrestling Showcase. <laughs> right. I, I, I love it. I love it, Devin, because I'd like that for him too. But the thing is, you're going to make, he's making money. He ain't yeah. leaving. He, he's, he's that is him. another thing. Like, because yeah. people talk shit about, you know, whatever. But when, uh, when you got family and, uh, you know, you got to take care of yourself and, you know, WWE offers you that money. It's hard to like swallow your problem. You know what? No, I'm not going to take those millions of dollars. I'll yeah, take my 500, the, the 10, whatever thousand it is. It's not the same. And you're on every week on TV, right? Or you were. And you're Very contracting true. yourself. So you're paying taxes like, uh, you know, I, I every just, appearance, you might as well take a third out of that because that's taxes. Uh, you know, it's a lot to think about. Not everybody can be as successful as, uh, Cody, Cody and Cardona are like the two indie guys that you know. Uh, well, obviously, uh, Boom Boom, you know, Cabana did a really good, and Janela, I guess, too. But Cody and Cardona are the only two that have like gambled on themselves and kind of done something with it. But they're hustling. Yeah, and yeah, Drew yeah. Galloway, and Drew Not Galloway, McIntyre. Yeah, they're oh, they he's back. Though. You know, he's back in the fold. 
So anyway, um, anyway, um, I mean, I think everybody agrees that why would you stop the original presentation that was working? Yeah. I would keep, I would have kept it exactly the same until it didn't work. <laughs> he was undefeated. People loved him. They knew who he was when he came out. I don't, I don't know. They even knew I, who what was. Sorry, sorry. I'm, oh, I'm asking something. What was the first part of that question? Wasn't there something else? No, you got it. Stay on the indies. She was talking about how they're not doing anything with Wardlow right now, and they compared him to Cross. Uh, oh, okay. It was, it was um. This was a text today, by the way. <laughs> well, here's funny. the thing about Karrion Cross. <laughs> when he debuted, pretty much the whole consensus of wrestling fans was like, "Why the fuck did they put him helmet on him? Why is he a Spartan?" Like everybody, we know that's the Vince. main crowd knew who he was when you debuted him, and then they are like. What the fuck is this? So he already had, you know, a a, a build up or whatever, you know, like some some mojo and some moxie and all that. And, and then James, when he came out, they're questioning. Let's, let's take his wife away from him too, like the yeah, the yeah. It's like they're debuting yeah, a guy that too. nobody knows. They debuted a guy that the crowd knew and changed him. But you know what? You bring him out the way he was in NXT, whether you know him or not, you're gonna like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he he looks real. He looks legit. Yeah, that's a bad answer. She's hot. <laughs> All right, that's it. Question's over. Back to you, James. Hell yeah. Well, uh, here we go. Know, uh, we might as well fantasy book some stuff, right? Because uh, it's time for Bober's WrestleMania. And uh, who Fucking is the first segment? Person? Thanks, Bober. <laughs> who, uh, who is it this week? <laughs> oh, it's my turn. I, I oh. mean, I, this, it ain't going to be very lengthy, I promise. That's what she That's said. What, but what about, what about the matches? <laughs> uh, so real quick, I got Punk and Rollins. I've got Roman versus Cody. I've got Rhea versus Becky Lynch. I've got EO versus Bailey. I've got Gunther versus Brock Lesnar. I think Brock comes back and puts over Gunther. I, I don't hate it. I, think I got Logan Paul and L.A. Knight. What is it? Logan, Logan Paul and L.A. Knight. LA Knight. Okay. Nice. I got Jimmy versus Jay Uso. I've got Rey Mysterio versus Santos Escobar. I've got the Street Profits and the New Day and Priest and Balor and Pretty Deadly in a four-way ladder match. But who wins? That wasn't the question. Yeah, I'm <laughs> Thank I would you. say Thank you for saying that because I was gonna be like, well, we didn't discuss that. <laughs> I didn't even think of the street profits, but they have built them towards uh, like a heel. Yeah, I like it. Who was all for again? Pretty deadly Shout street. Shout out JD Hoop. Uh Street Profits, New Day, Priest and Balor, and Pretty Deadly. I like it. New Day. I like that too. With the uh, return of Big E. And that could potentially be a Priest and Balor split in that match. And it wouldn't surprise me if we see a cash in that, that night also. Agreed. You can't write that. Uh, Carter and Chance, Natalia, Tegan Knox, and the Kabuki Warriors in a three-way match. Good Lord, Mike. Mike. Is it raining there, Mike? Or? I don't know what the fuck's going on. I don't know. Or is that just a new TV you got? New black oh, and white? Is your poker guys coming back? It's staticky as shit on your end. Sounds like you're drilling stuff, or I don't know what you're doing. He's making them black-eyed peas. And then uh, one more match I threw in there at the very end, Randy Orton versus AJ Styles. Well, uh, yeah, now after what you saw last week, boy, I'm a friend if you're a freaking loser when all these – whoever gets their turn last is going to win. Yeah, really. <laughs> but I'm interested. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing Logan Paul LA night. Um, I think Jay and Jimmy is in- inevitable, I think. Yeah. Um, the only one I'm worried about is Rhea, because I don't know if it'll be Rhea Becky or Rhea somebody else. Because I have, I just, I, I have to disagree with you. I really think it's to be Jade. See, I'm, a, I'm, a, I don't want them to push Jade so fast. That was my next well, thing. They haven't, but I mean, it's WrestleMania, and they I'm got her worried, here. For, they brought I'm her in for a reason. I'm gonna be wrong with Jade too. I think Jade's gonna be put in there somewhere. Yeah, I think she wins the Rumble. Damn. If she don't win the Rumble, I would like to see her and Bianca Belair in a match. Because I had her in Charlotte. So well, Charlotte I, 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 am, I just want to see what happens. I, I do want to see what happens with Jade. I, I don't know. I but, but I was, Jade I, and Bianca. Yeah. All right. Jade and Natalia. 
Well, that's probably going to be her first match. Yeah. And she'll beat her. <laughs> and they'll, they'll beat her. Well, it's think... going to be interesting to see how it all turns out, though. But I got a couple of them. I'm just like, eh, I don't know. Well, you don't know. And you don't know who's going to get hurt either. And you never know. We might have a women's TV title match. You know, we could introduce a TV title, but not having any TV. Does that sound good? And who would be the inaugural TV champion? Well, first we'd have to have TV, so Ring of Honor is just doing it wrong. But we're talking WrestleMania. You've been waiting two hours for that, haven't you? (laughs) We're talking WrestleMania. So, since WWE actually has TV, and it would be a a woman's TV title... Damn, who would be a damn good... Jade! She had the fucking TBS one for a year. Right. <laughs> uh, I don't want to pin her in that mid-card, though. I want to put her... I'll pin her all day. hey oh. Hey! <laughs> oh. I think Becky. Becky would be a great first TV champ. Get the hell out of here. Just like she did with the NXT title. Carry up a couple other women. Bring them give to it, the... Give it what, she the first SmackDown women's title, too? Unfortunately, it'd probably be Chelsea Green. Green. <laughs> I like Chelsea Green. I don't like the character right now. Yeah, let I Chelsea did. Green win it. I like that. I can't believe you liked it. I didn't mean for anybody to like it. Well, I mean, she'd be a damn <laughs> good uh, TV champion. Yeah, she'd be perfect for it. Yeah, with Piper Niven as her bodyguard. I like it. Shout out to them as the uh, Hard Foundation that week. That was awesome. <laughs> Going oh, like this Halloween, with, that was great. with Nightheart. That was so good. She had it down. <laughs> That's, That's it. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, appreciate that, Adam. Appreciate it, Bober, for adding more shit to our show. Your show. Sorry. Am I still making noise? Yep. Barely. You sound like Max Headroom. Barely hear you. Shout out, Devin. What were you, negative 15 when that came? <laughs> when that happened? <laughs> yeah, that thing gave me freaking nightmares, bro. <laughs> 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 Max Headroom. Shout out to another obscure reference on the, the show. That's awesome. But what else is awesome is uh so uh Brad, you know, came up with the the spirit of Dick Clark's rockin' New Year's Eve. Because this this is the uh before New Year's show. So uh, you know, we're uh it's kinda I'm not gonna say it's a year in review type thing, but uh I did want to give uh you know all of you guys a shout out of uh what a year it's been, man. Like, uh, you know, I made a bunch of basketball puns in the beginning of the year and, uh, you know, all that. And, uh, we've done some good things. We've, uh, obviously grown. There's uh, been adversity that we faced and guess what? We all powered through it, man. I, I pretty sure y'all know what I'm talking about. And, uh, cause Hey, they tried to take us down, but guess what? We kicked out it too. Uh, I'm really proud of the work that we're doing, uh, you know, currently and obviously the whole year. Love uh, doing this. Uh, you know, there's been uh, some bumps in the road uh, for all of our personal lives. And guess what? We come here. We have a damn good time. And, uh, you know, things are kind of working out. And uh, they're not working out because, you know, it just happened to work out. No. We kicked out it too, and we made things work out. And I really uh, just want to give you guys a shout out to... You know, we've all faced some adversity, and guess what? We fucking powered through it, and I'm really proud of you guys. And uh, everybody's, you know, little segment type things are growing and expanding, and everybody's getting good at it. Like, it's awesome. It's really, uh, it's cool to see the, you know, great growth of uh, the show. And, uh, you know, Les James, you know, like these little segments I ramble too much on, but I'm glad that you guys, uh, you know, are are doing like you know your own thing. You know, we're all we're all coming in, uh, we're all growing in our own. We're all becoming our own, and I fucking love that stuff. Um, yeah, uh, that was uh, it's not all of it, but as we uh do reflect on the end of the year and the beginning of a new year, you know, everybody just like, oh, at the at the beginning of the year, I'm gonna make changes. I'm gonna do this. Man, that's just a day of the week. You can make changes any fucking day you want to. You don't have to wait till January 1st to do that. And uh, if you are feeling like you need to make changes, then, hey, why not get a head jump, a head start on it? You know what I'm saying? Because uh, I truly do believe, like, you have the power to do it. 
You just have to fucking do it. It's going to be arduous. Oh, obviously, it's going to be tough. But man, like you got five friends here pushing you to fucking make those changes. You know, that's what we're here for. You know, and if you want to, if you really want to make that change, you will. You know why? Because you're the one doing it. Like, it's just real, uh, it's real inspiring. And I've got, you know, not to, I'm not a uh, person that does this, but I have got some personal messages about people like messaging me, like, man, you're an inspiration to me. And I've, uh, I've done this and this and this. And I'm like, you know, me? Like, I'm the inspiration to you, you know, but it's like, you just got to have faith in, in yourself. And here's another thing. Don't always be just assholes. Like, hey, if, if people deserve that you to be an asshole to them, by all means. But man, like, what if you what if you smile at someone someday or like one day and maybe they're having a bad day and that totally changes them around? Like, spread the positivity, spread the encouragement, and spread like, you know, we're we may not all come from the same backgrounds or same beliefs or anything, but man, we're kind of in this together. And let's say you treat someone courteously, like with during one little small interaction, like, hey, how's it going? You know, they care, like just a little shit like that. Who knows the impact that could have? Like, and even telling somebody something nice could fucking like, you know, have a massive impact because you're not going to ever move a mountain in a day. But if you move a pebble at a time, over time, you're going to turn around. And I'll be damned. There's a mountain you just moved. You know, like it's a, we've come a long way and we got a long way to go. And if you're, uh, if you're struggling, find what you can conquer. Like you're never going to, Climb Mount Everest, you know, but if you, if you're feeling like you're down and out, find what you can take care of first and then take care of that first. Like it's just a nickel and dime it, baby. Don't go for dollars and hundos and Benjamins, nickel and dime it, man. Figure out what you can conquer and conquer that and keep climbing up that hill. And when you get to the top of the hill, uh, you know, look, you know, look down, look around like, damn, I already conquered this, but guess what? Keep looking up. Because, uh, you know, there is no ceiling in this world. You can achieve whatever the fuck you want to. So as we dawn on to this new year and as things go, I want to wish everybody uh, wellness. And, uh, hey, be the best you that you can be. And don't let anybody ever fucking tell you you can't. Never. Because guess what? You live your life. They don't. They can tell you you're a piece of shit. Who gives a fuck what they think? Because guess what? When they pin you down, you kick out it too. So uh, that's you know pretty much what I got, and uh, I want to end it with uh, you know, for old acquaintance, be forgot and never brought to mind. Cause fuck that shit. Should old acquaintance yeah. be forgot in the days of all Lang sign? So hey, uh, you know, jump, make the life that you want to make, and fucking do it. And if they pin you down. Kick the fuck out of two. Cheers. Fuck Everybody yeah. fucking love it. Love the support. Appreciate everyone that I do this podcast with. You guys saved me more than I'll ever admit and more than you know. And the fans and the feedback and everything. Because we're probably the most humble podcast out here. Like, it literally is click, record, go. <laughs> you know? And we, hey, it's your show, baby. Like, come, if you need solace and you need help, we're right here. Because that's what we do on your show. Love it. Cheers. And let's fucking make 2024 our year. Your year. And there it is. Love it. Cheers. Yeah. But you know what? Uh, <laughs> now it's time to uh, get rid of something <laughs> and keep and maybe use uh, this New Year's edition. So, Brad, what is it this week? So this could be real simple or real hard. These are New Year's traditions. Some of them you may not do. Some of them you do. I don't know. There's all different parts of the world here, right? So keep, get rid of, do once. Pots and pans at midnight. <laughs> Fireworks at midnight. Or watch the ball drop at midnight. Which one you keeping? Which one you getting rid of? Which one you doing once? Devin. Uh, what is the first one? Pots and pans. Hit them together at midnight outside. So like I said, different traditions, different parts of the world. It's something I've done. It's something I also read online, <laughs> but I have done it. I'm just saying, like, there's all kind of weird things, like I've opening the windows. One of them is opening the windows. I swear to God. Tradition of opening the windows. Yep. That I did not know about. 
All right, so I'm gonna get rid of the pots and pans one to start, cause just cause I it's not my tradition. I'm I'm not for it. Um, the one I'm gonna keep forever is uh is dropping the ball on New Year's Eve. I absolutely love it. And then fireworks at midnight. Most of the time, my fireworks come right as soon as it gets a little dark. So I'm gonna leave that one to doing it one time for a fun night. All right, I go ahead, Adam. Say same as Devin. Exactly right. Same as Devin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do fireworks up until midnight, but you know, I always I always make sure I'm up past midnight to watch the ball drop. Mike, I don't know what the hell pots and pans and beating lids and I don't know what the hell that shit is. So, it's just making noise at midnight. It's all it is. You know what I mean? That's what fireworks. It's not like a crazy. It's not like a crazy idea. You know. Woo! Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I'm, kind of, I'm getting rid of the pans, pots and pans. That's for sure. <laughs> But um, it also depends on the weather outside. But if it's nice, you know, I'm outside. I have the little TV thingy outside, so we can do it. We're doing both, setting off fireworks and watching ball drop. We got to pick one and do once. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Amy. Hi, oh. <laughs> supposed to be repertoire episode, right? <laughs> I guess watching the ball drop. I guess so, same as Devin. Oh fucking a. All right, uh, James. Guess what, Brad? Uh, James. you know. I will be beating at midnight, but that's because I'm a single man. Hey, oh, shout out. No, it's a joke. Sorry. It's no, it a isn't. joke. But no, uh, <laughs> I've never really heard of the uh, beating the pots and pans thing. So uh, that is probably going to be the one I get rid of. I, uh, you know, you got to watch the ball drop. And it's funny how they do it. Like, uh, they'll play the, because I used to, I grew up in the central time zone. So they would always play the East Coast, the, you know, ball drop. And it'd be like, three, two, one. 11 p.m. <laughs> you know, that type of thing. <laughs> so we would always do, we'd always joke it's around with weird, that. It's weird, right? It's weird, isn't it? It's fucking crazy. Because yeah, it's like so, LA, so it's LA drops, so it's like 3 a.m. <laughs> you know? Yeah. LA's celebrating. Yeah. But yeah, uh, the ball drop has kind of been, you know, the tradition type thing. You know, the, every bar I've been to, they've got like, all right, show, show, show up. And they pause the jukeboxes and shit. And then, uh, you know, eating the stuff, like Mike was saying, you know, the, the greens are for money and the blah, 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 blah. Like, that's a one – I will one time do that, but the ball dropping thing is the ultimate. You know what I'm saying? You eat so greens I, once? No, yeah, I don't eat – I'm saying, like, the eating food for, like, you eat cornbread for this. You eat greens for money. You eat black-eyed that, peas for health. You eat that wasn't one of the options, though. Right? <laughs> Something. All right, I like so lettuce. I'm just fucking <laughs> I'm getting yeah. rid of fireworks. Fireworks are too much money. Oh, hey, we did do the fireworks. Why am I talking no, about fireworks? Where you come up with the food, James? My bad. Uh, the fireworks thing, never really done that on New Year's. Always lived in burn ban states and stuff. So oh, you're yeah. doing it once. Yeah, no, I live out in the country, so I can do it all the time. Hopefully. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm out on fireworks. I, I hate spending money on fireworks. I, I think it's one of these things you spend 300 bucks and it's over in a minute. You know, I could buy a hooker any day of the week. You know what I mean? <laughs> same thing. 300 <laughs> yeah, same bucks thing. over in a minute. In and out, right? Not and, and then she doesn't even wipe up your tears when you're done. No. You yeah, but like, your fireworks at least it's more bang. <clears throat> Not you're for your dud. buck. You're a, you're, a, you're a dud when you do it. That's fine. What I hate about spending $300 on a hooker and it's over in one minute is she doesn't cuddle me when I cry. You Here does the fireworks. Boom. <laughs> Fire Boom, places. it is. Fireworks. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do the pots and pans once because I did do that as a, ch a kid. I don't do it much anymore. And I will watch the ball drop every night, every New Year's Eve for the rest of my life. That is a fact. All right, next one. You uh, dress up, get a kiss at midnight, or eat pork? Devin? You know, I'm going to kiss my beautiful wife, Erica, every Good. single New Year's for the rest of my life. So that's the keep forever. Um, this is the worst. Eating pork and oh, what? Else? I'm glad you went to him pork? first. What? What are the other two? Dress up like <laughs> look nice, and then eat pork. Well, dress up. I don't have to dress up like every single night, so I, I'll I'll get rid of that one just because I can pretty much dress like this at the bar and New Year's. That's fine. You're gonna wear uh, then you're gonna wear a cactus Jack, Jack shirt for New Year's Eve. I I mean, Eric is I, not good. <laughs> not going for that. But she's also only gonna go for eating pork one time. So put on your favorite polo I'll shirt that. that you wear all the time. That's a nice one. Yeah, that's a nice. One. What type <laughs> of establishments are you going to, Brad? Because <laughs> I'm with Devin on this. The establishments I frequent, it's t-shirt. <laughs> you know, cactus jack ones. 
Yeah. This is I wore, I, wore an cool. Austin, I wore an Austin 316 shirt one time, and a girl came up to me and goes, what does autism 316 mean? And I looked down, and I was like, you may want to read <laughs> that again. Hey. I shit you not. I was in a oh, crowd of people. They all heard it. All right. And all right, Kevin, what said, I'm getting laid tonight. <laughs> Adam. So you're getting rid of dressing up. You're going to kiss your wife for the rest of your life. And you're going to eat pork once. <laughs> yep. All right. Go ahead, Adam. I'm, gonna, I'm same as Devin. I'm going to kiss Erica every time. <laughs> gonna... No, no, you're not. <laughs> no, well, hey, walk, 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 go, walk, go, 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 No, man. <laughs> no. Yes. No, man. Uh... <laughs> okay, no, maybe not the same thing. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, so I'll leave that for once. Dress uh, up. Uh, I don't mind dressing up. You know, that's fine. Then pork, throw that pork shit out. All right. I like we have different answers. I, it didn't seem like it was going this way today. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I know. I'm dressing up, going out. I'm eating pork, and I guess I'm kissing. kissing one time. Yeah, Whoever, one time. right? Right. You get too? Whoever's there. I got kids. <laughs> I got so yeah. You got kids, you know. You get, yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> <You're up. laughs> Go ahead, uh I have had one New Year's uh kiss, so I guess that would be the one time. Your boy loves to eat all all cuts of pig. I James, mean, we're that was talking... the special moment we had, James. So don't just play it down. Well, I didn't want to put it on the show, Adam. Well, <laughs> don't just act like it didn't happen. All cuts of pig are good. <laughs> like, uh, you know, like roast, like bacon, ham, you know, all cuts of pig. So I'm keeping the pork. And what was the other one? Dress up. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Yeah. You know my answers. So I do all three of these things at New Year's. I do. You bet you do. I don't, I'm not wearing a tuxedo or anything. But, but you, I, I you got a pinky ass shit, though. You're a hot flutin'. I am not. Like <laughs> no. I am not, but I do. Um, I, I'm not wearing a T-shirt. All right, but if I have to get rid of one, it's going to be that one because why not? And I'm going to kiss my wife at midnight because if not, I'm in trouble here. By the way, shout out Deb <laughs> for the, the shout outs we gave her last week. <laughs> I got to play that for her today. And finally, um, you know, eating pork's a good luck thing, and I do it every New Year's Day, but I will do it once because that's my options. The final one is not get drunk, James, because I know what the answer would be. But it oh, is word. involving, but it does involve alcohol. So the three of them are, but the other two are. But toast champagne, make a resolution, call family at midnight. Devin. So I'll do the. I got, forever. I'm gonna call my family because I'll always call my aunts and uncles, my mom, my do? grandparents. Well, if they they call me, I'll answer. Uh, my grandma, she calls me at every midnight. So. Uh, I'm sure she does. Make sure she picks <laughs> yeah. up whatever's she going on. She shows up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, You're not bringing so. this new year in with a bang. I promise you. <laughs> she might be, though. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> I what? hope not. <laughs> oh, man, I just heard it. <laughs> is- <laughs> All right. I'll get to the I'm a James. toast champagne one time because I've done that once on New Year's. So, and then I can't remember the last one. The resolution. resolution. Oh, resolutions. Yeah. And you don't really need a resolution to change your life. You can just make that decision yourself. Even though I kind of set a re- resolution for myself last week, um, yeah, it's I'm just over. Not <laughs> it's out the window. So, what's the difference, right? Yeah, he ain't vaping, yeah exactly. though. Devin doesn't. He's what? Wasn't it vaping or something? Vaping, yeah. Yeah, I would really like to stop that in 2024. No, I, that's but, good. Good for you. That's not really vaping? a resolution. That's just I. I need to stop it. I know what Adams are going to be here. Go ahead, Adam. No, I want to know what it is. Go ahead. All right, you're, 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 not toast, you're not toasting champagne because you don't drink. What was it? What's the name of that? Uh... Okay. Um. You're going to call your family, and you're going to make a resolution once. Great <laughs> reference. You need a genie hat. Great reference. Am I right? 100%. <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not toasting champagne because I don't drink champagne. So okay. that's not the window. <clears throat> uh, make a revolution once, I guess. And Yeah, the revolutions are tough. Yeah. And instead of calling... What I'm doing is I'm getting on my phone and putting Happy New Year to everybody and hit schedule message 
and having the message sent out on its own. And <laughs> I ain't got to worry about it. Life hack. Life hacks with Mike Whitaker. <laughs> That's Good. better than revolutions. <laughs> Go ahead, James. Hey, well, uh, well, we are celebrating the new year, and that would be a revolution, uh, you know, around the sun. So shout out. Uh, the the family thing. If they text me, maybe I'll text them back. Uh, <laughs> but I'm not going. Well, I'm not going. Happy New Year, you know. Like, uh, come on now. Yeah, no. I'll uh, say, but I, I'm not that ske- schedule send. Twelve o'clock. So it was. Uh, it was the other one toasting? Oh, and... champagne. Make a resolution. Call family. All right, call family. Gone. Uh, not if they text up. But I'm I love call. it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, let's see, toast, champagne, or resolution? I would say resolution will be once, and uh, toast, champagne, the cold, refreshing, uh, champagne, natural light. But yeah, I'll make so a resolution, but I'm you know, you know, yeah, I'm out on resolutions. Okay, I have goals for next year that I talked about, they can call them whatever you want, but a resolution is bullshit, it's too much on the spot. You should always try to be better. Well, but it doesn't, exactly. But and announcing gotta, it, listen, listen, I know my gym is going to be packed fucking if, heavy from January 1st to January 16th. I know that. But I know February 5th, everybody's gone. So December, gone. like December, so December like 27th. Ah, oh, fuck it. I don't want to change myself. And then That's you wake it. up January 1st, That's all of a sudden, it. like, moving forward, I'm going to do this. No. If like, you yeah. feel ambition to be better today, be better today. Don't Why wait. Why put it off? Why, Why put it don't off wait a first? week? Don't wait a week. Do it now. You're ready now. Do exactly. it. Exactly. All right. So glad we got that out of the way. <laughs> um, I'm not. I, I I am gonna. Uh, listen. I tried to call family on New Year's Eve. I think those uh the cell phone the mobile lines sometimes fuck up and you can't even do it. So I'll do that. I'll try it once. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I'm toasting champagne every time. <clears throat> and that is it. That was fun, guys. Actually, it was more fun than I thought because I didn't like any of this. But it, it worked. Out. It worked. Sometimes it just works out. <laughs> hey, it relates, man. You know, it relates to New Year's. So, uh, you know, we let it, it let it play out, right, James? <laughs> exactly. You know what else is gonna play out? What we're watching. So, uh, Devin, what we got on the uh, Devin's demographic this week? Well, this week on Devin's demographic, something I'm gonna be watching is Matt Riddle. Back in MLW, it was announced uh, last Thursday, as you're listening to this, that Matt Riddle has signed with MLW, an exclusive deal. I did not. Um, know. There's and also he's taking, be... he's taking on the honorary, which me and Adam are honorary uses. He's taking on our use. Yes, sir. I love how you guys always leave me out of that. I, I was there too. Take on... uh, no, you weren't, Brad. No, I have no, a picture no, of proof. I have, I have a picture, picture as well. I have a picture. Did he yeah, call you Oos? He, room did, room call he did call no, me Oos. He 100% called me Oos. Yes, no, he did. Yes, he did. You sympathy Oos. You are probably a make-a-wish Oos. Hey, listen, I'll take a sympathy Oos all day long. Sorry, Devin. Bet you would. <laughs> yeah, he called me Oos, too, as he handed me stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> go ahead, Devin. Brad's playing Oos. Leave him alone. <laughs> I think they called everybody Oos. So last <laughs> week on one of the top wrestling shows around busted open scott damore from tna was on there and he said this quote we're on the edge of one of the biggest signings in tna history that signing as we're recording still hasn't been announced i don't believe they have had some signings re-signings like kushida a few others what's that james it will blow your socks off he said what guy Fantastic. walks into the ring and kicks his shoes off? Hmm. MLW is a one-off, man. I'm telling you. It could Blow be. Blow your socks off. Which guy walks into the ring and jumps up and kicks his uh, little flip-flops up? Is he one of the biggest in TNA history, though? I mean, think? who else is going to – what, you think Dolph Ziggler is going to go to fucking TNA? I mean, let's oh, be real here. Right back. <laughs> You got you could have to be think about monetary too. Nobody's gonna take shit money just to go to TNA. No offense, but you know you. Know what and I'm Dolph Ziggler's going to Puerto Rico. Unless we're walking with Elias, I mean, I don't know. Okada's gonna be on their uh, new. Like, they cannot on the afford him. 
That's fair. Uh, I also James was ready wanna, for that. Huh? Point well, out two eating, things, I, and I may be eating crow on that. Who knows? I uh, I got for my last demographic. There's two things about the independent wrestler Warhorse. One, he had to vacate the Relentless Wrestling Pacific Northwest Championship. If you haven't watched his video on Instagram, it's really heartfelt and really emotional. I definitely think you should check it out. Um, and also, him and Danhausen are now an, an independent tag team touring around the Indies. They are going by the team name of Dan Horson. Where'd it come That's up with that? That's the signing. That's the signing. Could be. Who knows? Yeah, look at look at uh, James being ready for your demographic, huh? I don't know, but I'm know was on NXT this week, but you know what? <laughs> Look at this stuff. How about that? <laughs> well, hey, that was my demographic this week. Glad you guys liked it. But back to you, James. Oh, hold yeah. on, Bryant. Do you have uh, what I sent you, Bryant? Oh, Lord almighty. Go ahead, James. You can talk until he puts it up. Oh, wait. Here Is we this go. a Bradley's demographic? No, I just wanted to make a point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he probably thought you were a fucking make a wish kid man look at you all i know is this he was cool <laughs> if you're watching <laughs> right now on premier streaming <laughs> network.com brad explain this picture to us this is uh me adam and uh you know <laughs> pyrus in the background of course <laughs> what do you want me to explain i just like how you're like hey here's cool <laughs> You know, I'm, an honorary, I'm an honorary ooze. That's all I got to say about that. Well, James we, did uh, say Jacob, that you weren't in the picture, and I don't Jacob, see James in the picture. It's here. Jacob Fat too. Oh, uh, because uh, our Stane picture is uh, you know, like our picture was behind the scenes. You know, he's yeah, being nice here. Hotel. Exactly, he's being nice posing. You know, with Brad. He's actually. Yeah, I'm just kind of standing there. If you guys really look at this picture, I'm not the and, guy. And, and, and he's hugging thing. Adam. So, so this validates our point. Hey, Adam, <laughs> whose arm? Does he have his arm around Brad, or does he have his arm around you? Uh, well, I mean, I can't see my face because the arm is wrapped around. And got I will face. be damned, Brad and and Devin. I will be damned. Man, I'll tell you what. I look pretty good in this picture. It looks but, like Brad just walked up great. in the last second. <laughs> That's for real. It looked like Brad just walked up and posed. But uh, Jacob, you know. You guys, might, might jump in on this, Adam. something like that. I jump in on this, huh? I thought that <laughs> was hard, so there for a second. That's a it sales way to do it, time. man. Oh, oh, gotta get that sale. Oh, gotta get that yep. picture. It almost looks Photoshop. It, like it kind of does look like Brad's photoshopped in there. That's you know, too I have perfect like, of a I, pose from Brad. Best part Brad is I got his like, elbow is on the table, so maybe you know, Brad, you were probably falling backwards and just caught yourself with the elbow on the table. I think that's R. I think that's RJ, and he just photoshopped himself <laughs> into it. <laughs> You know, I agree. I think that this picture shows that I maybe we are not the closest of friends. But Brian, <laughs> but Brian, why don't you go ahead and post a picture of of the two very very best friends? We're waiting. Who, Beretta and uh, Chuck Taylor? All right, so maybe I jumped the gun there with Brian. <laughs> Mac Jones and Anthony Pyers. Oh my gosh! Give it time. Give it time. Uh, yeah. Is that Sorensen and Frank Bruno? I do have pictures of both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Uh-oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh. Hey. oh, no diggity. Oh, you didn't know. I mean, if we're gonna play pictures, I mean, I, I, got <laughs> I don't know why I'm still doing it. We're not. We're not gonna play pictures. <laughs> Look who's dragging <laughs> the episode along now, huh? Look who's we're not gonna play pictures. <laughs> I got a picture with a famous guy. Okay, don't we all? Don't we all? Moving on. We are not gonna yeah. play pictures. Anyway, Brad, Road Dog looks like that. your older brother in that photo. I'll take it. Road Dog is deceptively <laughs> big. Like there. he's a big guy. Yeah, he's like six mm-hmm. six. It was cool to meet him the first time. Like, damn, uh, you don't, you don't look you. that big. On TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, where do you get off being tall? You're not tall. He's tall. He's, he's tall. He's around shit. everybody else, and he doesn't. He blends in with everybody else. But when he's by himself, my golly. Oh yeah, he's a tall feller. Tall drink yeah. of water. You know what else is a tall drink of water? Next week. So, uh, what are we doing next week? Go ahead, Devin. So next week, we are going to be doing some matches that we discussed in our group chat earlier. That I am currently going to to tell mm-hmm. you guys what they are. 
So, when did we I just think we're going to do one that is a match of the year candidate. And since TNA is coming back, we're going to do a classic match from TNA. And they are? When did we discuss this? Going to be decided in the group chat. Okay. So, yeah, so we're going to do a match of the year. Uh, by the so time this airs, you will already know it. And we're going to do a TNA match, which uh, Devin will have the links for for us. So that is it. Back to you, James. Uh, hell, hell yeah. We're hell doing yeah. something next week. <laughs> Good yeah, next week, we're watching matches. <laughs> right? No way. <laughs> Oh, so is it time for a conclusion in? Yeah, I'm done. Conclusion in. Did you see how you spelled that? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Shout, Shout out, Jamie. Out. A lot of professionalism on this podcast. You know, conclusion in. Yeah, but hey. Glad. Thanks, JD, for everything. Also true. But uh, in, in conclusion in, I just want to say... uh. Really appreciate uh, you guys being here. Great episode. Uh, glad I was on time this time, and uh, you know all that stuff. Uh, we got a good thing going, and uh, I, you guys, obviously, I kind of ramble in the group chat and dip out, but uh, this means a lot to me. You guys mean a lot to me. And hey, maybe uh, I'm using it to ease my mind sometimes. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that's kind of what the basis of the show is like. Just kick back and relax and hang out with your friends. And uh, as we end 2023, let's end it strong. And let's start 2024 stronger than that. Because, you know, there's nothing wrong with improving yourself. You know what I'm saying? Every day, be a little bit better. Give a smile to a person. You know, say, hey, how's it going? You know, just uh, randomly, you know. I'm not saying go out and shake everyone's hand. But, you know, moving forward, why not bring a little joy and happiness to people? Why not? you know ease their mind and they don't even know you won't even know that you helped them and maybe you brought them along because you know what if their life is pinning them down and with your little smile they kick out it too you know what i'm saying and you know that's all we can do because that's what we do and that's what you do on your show baby it's a kick out crew want to thank everybody thank the fans and uh hey you know it. Guess what? We're going to see your ass next week. So, uh, goodbye, acquaintance. Be forgotten. Ugly sign. Run. <laughs>